Welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world where I have survived 4,000 days. I love to build and build and a little bit more building on top. With over a year and a half spent in this world and nearly 900 hours survived, I've already survived 1,000 days. Here's my journey to survive 2,000 days. Please leave a like and subscribe. And if you don't want to watch this entire thing, just leave it running in the background as it helps me out a ton. Let's get rocking. Here we have the Minecraft Nether Portal, a majestic creature that often travels in small herds. We must approach quietly as they spook easily and inflict emotional trauma. Don't worry, I'm fine. <laughs> Fine. Today, we're in pursuit of the head of the herd. Memes aside, leave a like if you're excited, and let's get rocking. Since the last episode where I built this entire village, I found myself in some of my friends' hardcore Minecraft worlds. The 100 hours of hardcore Minecraft. Attack! Where we were tasked with trying to end their hardcore series. <laughs> You're so dead. How's your life? Yes! Wait, wait, guys, guys, guys. Netherite blocks. Oh my god. We can upgrade oh, to full netherite. I think I found a trap. What? Where? Where is it blowing up? Oh! Unless that's a wither just hitting us. Oh gosh! <laughs> that's a lot of explosions. Let's Joel died! Was, was that here? <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring what happened? And he was pushing one of these along, right? And then he just he just went like, oh, I just wanted to see what happened. And then he went to investigate. And boom! <laughs> that took me off guard. <laughs> He's gonna be so angry! Okay, well you guys can log off now and um, thanks for thanks for thanks for coming on my helping out and stuff. You know, that's that's very cool of you, but the the challenge is uh, the challenge is definitely done now. Uh, gotta go AFK 50 minutes! I gotta AFK! Turn around, Grant! Stay! There's the totem! There's the totem! Joel had the right way of going. <laughs> there we go! He's down! We survived an hour and a half in hardcore Minecraft! Yay! Woo! Woo! Oh. oh. We. Oh. 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 This is. No. This, yep. Upset. Yep. I guess I just stay out here now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just got uh, 98 and a half hours to go. And back to my world. It's only fitting to add some new graves into our own hardcore world. We're gonna need four graves right over here. So we'll just go ahead and do this real quick. Grian, Grian, Smallish Beans, and Good Times with Scar. Well done, gentlemen. I'll go ahead and spruce up the old graves as well. We might need an actual graveyard here soon. Getting into the first project for the day, I gathered up a load of copper ore and broke it all down as I was starting to really run low on copper. Throwing it all in the smelter that is not very super, it's off to the first build for the day. Finishing off the road to the new village, starting off with a bridge made out of copper, stone brick, and the works, I also spent some time detailing the small dip in the land here by bringing in a load of dirt and bushes to make it stand out a bit more. And then from there, I decided to move on with actually creating a road where we're bringing in all of the coarse dirt and spruce slabs that I have over here to line everything up and connect ourselves back nearby to the sheep farm. With every hardcore episode, I add a new field into this world to keep growing my empire. But today we're doubling down with two fields. So I only have one question for you. Have you subscribed? I'm working towards hitting 1 million subscribers this year, so I really appreciate you helping me get there as it helps tell YouTube you like my content and they suggest it to more people. With that, I've added in a lilac field as well as a peony field outside the village since the wheat field in the last episode looked a little bit lonely. And we can't have that. For today's project, I want to create a massive nether portal. It's day 691, and this guy is kind of rough. First step is to get crying obsidian to decorate with. For that, I'm going to need a load of gold to trade with piglins in the nether. Getting a bunch of materials together for a simple piglin trading farm, and we're good to go to with trying to catch some piggies. I think the best place we can throw this mini piglin trading farm for now is going to be right back here in this wall almost. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> now I'm gonna be smart about this as we're going along here. Instead of like last time where I built the entire farm and then tried to get the mobs inside. No, 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 no. There we go. Now all I need to do is lure some piglins up to the top with us. Oh, that's quicker than I wanted. Quicker than I wanted. I was not ready. I was not ready. Not ready. I wasn't expecting them to be so excited about being in my bartering farm. Come on, all the way up here. You know you want to. 
Yay! Yeah! All the way to the back. One in. Piggy, number two. I forgot the carpet in number one. Oh, no, no. And carpet's down. And now you want to come back this way. Get the gold. No, not, not the time. Not the time. Not the time. He did it. Crisis averted. Piggy number three. There we go. And he's in. Or can subscribe. Difficult part done. Time to get back to finishing the farm. Taking all of the gold I have in my name right now, which is not that much. If I put two stacks in here and two stacks in there... We can start these farms. There we have it, the first crying obsidian. Well, these dudes are trading away. I need to fly around and get up as much nether gold ore as I can. <laughs> With that bit of happiness, I set off on a quest to silk touch every bit of nether gold ore I could find to bring it home in the future to smelt. Oh, no, 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 no. Goodbye, gold. There's a bastion. I haven't been in one of these yet, and I've got a little bit of a stupid idea as there's blocks of gold everywhere. So if I can find a way in, I'm already terrified. I see the loot chests. There's nobody in here. And we got one gilded blackstone, a block of iron. We'll take it. What do we got in here? <gasps> gilded blackstone. Nice. This is the worst bastion loot I think I've ever seen. There's another bastion right down here outside of it. Right. I think the best bet here is just to fly down on top of that pillar because they can't get to me. I didn't hit the pillar. I didn't. I didn't hit the pillar. I didn't hit the pillar. Nailed it. Anything in the chest? I'm a shovel. Oh, the chest. The chest. Okay. Okay. All right. We finally made it here. Ancient debris. Oh, that's one. We'll take it. And a block of gold. Okay. That was very worth it to find this. Another right scrap. More gold too. All right, we are back over at the farm now. And all of the gold has been traded. What are we looking at down here? And nice, 36. Using our super smelter again over here, all I need to do is throw some nether gold ore and nether gold ore into there. I'll get a better super smelter setup done here soon, but at least that's almost four more stacks of gold. I shouldn't need too much crying obsidian for this, so maybe another stack or so would be enough. Oh my God, they're T-posing. Look at them. Oh, they're doing the dance. No, don't come for me. Don't come for me. Just do your dance. Do your dance. No, you you all had something special. I was, ah, uh, man. All right, now we're working. And I will hide in here and hope that I stay safe. A stupid little baby pigling got into the system and started stealing my gold. So I had to get rid of him and childproof the rest of this farm. Crisis averted with the baby problem, and we've got ourselves another stack of crying obsidian. I'm out of gold now, so hopefully this is enough crying obsidian, and that's sorted. I also got a soul speed three book, which we can use later if we want. I'll be honest, soul speed's not my favorite enchantment. Anyways, it is time to move on to our next project, the Amethyst Crystal Farm. Inside of our dwarven cave, we have one geode, two geode right here, and directly below that one, we have a third geode. Starting off, I want to reveal all of the budding amethyst clusters and clear away everything else. No! Oh, ah, oh, dang it. Being extremely careful as they're very easy to break. Hey, look at that, some diamonds. I feel like regular diamonds are pretty rare. Six of them though, we'll take it. We're on to clearing out the second geode to keep making progress. Already plenty of amethyst crystals are being revealed, but I don't want any downtime when farming. Before diving into the last geode, I'm making sure to repair up the pickaxe so we don't accidentally break it. All right, much better. Already spending over two hours mining out these geodes and I haven't even started setting up a system to gather these amethyst crystals. Wait, what is... You gotta be kidding me. There's another geode? What? I'm clearing out the third one right here. That's two geodes within about 10 blocks of each other. I guess I probably cleared that one out too. We might as well. Okay, three down. I guess one more to go. I already have so much calcite, blocks of amethyst, and smooth basalt. All right, there we go. Finally, all four geodes are dug out. Oh, I'm glad I dug this one out. Look how many there are. Oh, hey, buddy. Welcome on down to my cave. Oh, it's great to see you. I really need a slime farm soon. Next up, I need some platforms to be able to mine up all of the crystals that are floating. I'm thinking acacia wood and spruce wood will be perfect. A quick stop over to the iron farm, which is very quickly filling up, but I need to make a bunch of chains. I'll be a good Minecraft citizen, and while I'm here, I'll craft up all these 
these into blocks. All right, there we go. All condensed down. I think I can start out here with a bunch of spruce and spruce trap doors. So we're not blocking anything. And using some fences, we can connect ourselves to the ground and a little ladder to get me up. The only ones I can't get right now are the very top. But maybe I bring some acacia trap doors all the way out here and use some chains to attach it to the ceiling. I need to hide it, but honestly, it doesn't look half bad. We've got the plan. Now it's time to do this three more times for the other geodes that we've already mined out. Originally, I didn't like how geodes work since you couldn't control where the clusters spawn, but I'm embracing the chaos here and I'm really liking the result of this. And it's turning out really well so far. Number three is done and this one has a lot of grown crystals on it. So I think I'm gonna actually gather them up while I'm here. I'll be the first one to admit it. This might be a little overkill. Cleared out the first geode and already a bunch are growing back in, fully grown. Finishing off the final geode with even more platforms and it's time to set up the mine cards. But first, I need to load more acacia wood here as I want some more trapdoors. I'm sorry, Piggy, move. Piggy, move, don't be dumb. Come on, Piggy. Oh no. Took the time to clean out some oak trees as well and got a bunch of leaves. And I'll leave these saplings here just in case I need some more. Our shulker box monster is growing quite a lot down here. And before we can get the rail installed, I came to the realization that I still need to make sure that the front of this thing looks good. From here, I want to surround the entire thing with a large amount of calcite. All right, it's not looking half bad. And next step, smooth basalt. And for the final step around here, just spamming a bunch of the amethyst crystals. With the other three geodes hidden in the ground, I wanted to do something extra special for this one here, as it's the only one we're gonna be able to see. And I really like it. Just look at the vibes now. It's time to get a minecart system going. All right, here we go, pressing the button, and we are off from the lowest geode, arriving at the next, and headed over to the first two. I spent a lot of time setting this system up, so I might as well use it today. One more time, let's see how many crystals we can get. I cannot complain at all about this right here in pursuit of a custom nether portal building i've already taken the time to assemble a piglin bartering farm in the nether for crying obsidian and now we also have a full amethyst mining setup with four geodes to get all of the crystals i could ever need it is finally time finally time to transform this nether portal first digging down to set up the beacon as this project is huge i want to create a portal deep underground so we need to dig out a massive tunnel and then a cavern to build inside of getting right into the digging though my goal is to create a very long tunnel that is large enough to actually fly through it semi safely so it feels like we're really delving deep into the mountain but it's also something that's quickly accessible i thought about using a minecart but like nah maybe maybe later no 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 but now my friends for the big dig in order to create a massive portal room i needed a huge cavern Unfortunately, we didn't dig into one, so I'm making my own. Wanna see how many blocks I broke? This many blocks. It was at least seven. But now it's time to dive into the cave Ow. and set up this nether portal. The max height for a nether portal is 23 blocks tall, so you best believe we're doing that. And that is feeling pretty grand. Cool, project done. That's all we needed, right? Yep, that's it. Oh no, oh no, oh god, no, 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 no. It's not worth dying for a bit. To enhance the glow of the portal, I cleared out the blocks behind it and replaced them all with amethyst blocks to make it a little bit more fancy. Now, I think a very important aspect of building this nether portal is it shouldn't be giant and blocky like it is. So I wanna start creating some shapes, like reaching out into it, cutting off some of the corners. Then inside of those, we can introduce some of the crying obsidian as well. And then the other aspect is I wanna make it look like there's almost tendrils coming out of the portal, leeching along the edge of this cave wall. Yeah, that's looking really good. Now I just gotta bring this all the way around the portal. Okay, let's get to it.
running into a slight issue over here as I only have a little over two stacks of obsidian left and 21 crying obsidian. We've got a lot left to do around here. Now, I have absolutely no idea where this portal is going to link up. Oh, slightly different location. Cool, cool, cool. But now down at the bartering farm, we've got no obsidian. Blackstone. I can use that. I can make blackstone happen. Gotcha! Not much, but it's a start. I just need more gold again for this i decided to fly over to the mesa baum and try mining in there as gold is a lot more common in those caves or i could just find some out of ruined portal down here looted quite a few portals on the way over and got a decent amount of crying obsidian and obsidian but it's time to dive down into these caves and ooh, gold already and i'll grab the copper while i'm here too because i can never get enough I'm really wishing this was gold right now, but I will take it. Dripstone caves are absurd for copper. I mean, just look at this. We have four stacks of blocks of raw copper already. Okay, I keep getting distracted. I really need to focus on getting gold. We're here for gold, not zombies. More oh, copper. I must think of the builds. Think of the beautiful build. Another portal can wait. All of that got me less than a stack and a half of gold. But look at that copper. I'll load all of this up for now so we can at least start smelting the copper down for later. And we can hook up some more hoppers to the back with some chests or extra fuel. That'll at least allow me to kickstart the piglin bartering system again. So hopefully we get some good trades out of this. Here's to be all traded away. Did we get anything? Ah, stupid baby piggy. Oh, no, you're not getting away this time. Okay, we got another 32 crying obsidian and 15 obsidian for all of that. You know what? I think I got a new plan. Now I've been thinking for the walls of this place, I don't want to leave it as stone because I think it looks weird. So what we can do instead is turn it into cobble deep slate and tough blocks. So grabbing the beacon and it's time to head on down into the mines. First, setting up the beacon down at the base again with some haste too. And we'll see what we can find around here. Oh, the first gold. Oh, it actually exists. <laughs> Diamonds. Ooh, even more. There we go. Full sugar box of cobble deep slate and full sugar box of tough. Using a little bit of the black stone over here, we've got a nice walkway coming up to the front of our portal. Okay, that'll be pretty good right in here. And I think I want to grab some anvils to fill in these little gaps. Anvils in place, warp trap doors on top. And I like it. Let's get back to expanding the portal. First thing to try out here is if I add in some black stone around all of our obsidian, it might help save on the obsidian count a little. First area is done and I think... Yeah, I think I can build that in there. It helps add to the darkness vibe of a portal. Back into the big build now, I wanna add in all of the blackstone, extending out the tendrils further into the cave, as well as covering the walls with the deep slate and tough blocks I got earlier and working on the ceiling a bunch. I wanna take down the scaffolding and see what it looks like. All right, here goes nothing. You know what? That with the tough in the ceiling and now all the blackstone in here, I think we're really starting to sell it. One final effort, it's time to finish up the portal and walls of this cavern replacing all of the stone around the edge and adding even more shape into this place with deep slate and tough blocks before moving on to creating our front door. Once I'd love to go, but I had an idea. Starting off, I wanna create a winding path through here in the center of the room. Using the cobble deep site, we can turn this into something really cool to almost have a bridge that we can walk through this area. Before I get distracted and only do the bottom of this room, I need to finish up the walls and ceilings. One final corner to go, and the biggest grind of this project so far will finally be done. I have all of the blocks I could ever need, it's just a matter of time to place all of them right down here in the cave. And check this out, I forgot that. Okay, above the door we go. There we go. Now the cavern's done. With the cavern built out now, at least for the walls and the ceiling, there's one important thing I need to take care of. And I have no bone meal. Please work, please work, please work, please work, please work. For now, I can at least get started. I need a lot of glow lichen. And that is because there are a lot of mobs spawning all over the place, and I don't want to use torches. All of the torches are gone from the wall, which is fantastic. And next up, my friends, I think it's time that we open up this cavern even more and make it a little bit easier to fly through, because I've hit my head far too many times. First off, turning the bottom of the cavern into some cobble deep slate and cobblestone to walk along like a peasant before taking some time to fine tune 
the cavern and clear out the ceiling even further to fly down this tunnel like the hero of this world that I am. From there, I wanted to decorate, going for nethery vibes by adding in some soul fire lanterns and making the tunnel a bit darker, making sure to get rid of all of the torches and use some glow lichen to help spawn proof everything. From there, it's back on the path to connect this cave up to the rest of the road network and doing some terraforming to make sure this fits in with all of the cliffs that we have around the area. I even snuck in some time to create a custom oak tree on the side as I needed some fresh air after being in the cave for so long. Maybe I squeezed in a few extra custom trees, but it's looking really good out here now. And check out this cavern all the way down. We can fly safely into the portal room. I love this build, but I've got an idea to take it to the next level. What if we dig the floor down even further and create a foggy glass floor out of purple glass? The shape is now in and I like it. Time to take this down another 12 blocks. With an even larger hole dug out down here, we're good to go. At this point in today's episode, I've already mined well over 70,000 blocks with my netherite pickaxes. We have been on the grind. All repaired and back in the cavern we go. It feels so cool inside of here. I wanna use blackstone in the center as if the nether portal is leaching out through the fog. First corner is done and I like it, but I think it's gonna look so much better once the glass is in. Halfway done with the build and I have run out of blackstone, but this is looking pretty insane. Quick little trip here into the nether where I'm trying to find some blackstone. Maybe if I get lucky, I'll just dig right into it. Hopefully this should be enough to finish that corner. Oh. Blackstone bridge is in place. Time to cover the walls in deep slate before we can add in all of the fog. It's all done. The walls are in. There's mobs. There's lots, lots of mobs. Not okay. Next step is placing torches along everywhere at the bottom. With all the torches in place, before we can start adding the glass on here, I need to put purple carpets across the entire top layer, which thankfully the sheep farm has been working overtime. So we've got plenty of purple wool and I'm getting very good at coming in and out of this tunnel every time. Now to just run around and place in all of these carpets. Look at this purple floor. Next up, we need a load of purple dyes. So rose bushes and lapis is. I've been at this build for so long that words are starting to blur together. But now we've at least got a bunch of purple dye and I've been working on getting a bunch of glass together. All right, here we go. One final effort on this build. We'll see how far this glass can get us. More glass acquired in the trading hall and we should hopefully have enough. Hold another shulker box of purple stained glass ready to go. Let's get back to placing in the cave. <laughs> Things are looking pretty fantastic inside of here, but the fog is a little too dark and we are spawning mobs around the edge. So I want to try adding in a little bit of the glow lichen down here to see if this can be enough to brighten it up. There it is, the mega nether portal transformation is complete. Today I am aiming to finish this entire project by completing the city and creating a super smelter for future projects. First things first today, I've been meaning to do this for a while. Let's update the world map. Last time I did this was episode three was that guy right there at the start of it. So now we go episode 12 and we'll see everything added on here. Doing this every 10 episodes or so, I think it'd be a great way that we can see progress inside of our world. Now here comes the part I am super excited about. Throwing in the offhand for now so we can see it all updating as we go. Look at everything coming in here. Oh, that is magical. But I do need 10 more maps. Oh, I'm so happy we have cartographers. Oh, please don't ruin it. Yes, I locked it in. From there, it's time to move the old map over and make room for an expansion by flying around the new village project and opening up a bunch of maps. 
There it is, the brand new town build finally on the map. We need a cartography table, a bunch of glass panes, and a load more empty maps. Because I want to copy all of these maps. Which means taking this guy right here with that one, making two copies, and then we lock one, put that back on the wall. This is gonna take a while. And there we have it. All of the maps are updated and check that out. And everything else is here inside of the double chest, ready for the next round. Now with every hardcore episode, I plant a new field in this world, slowly consuming the landscape around me. Everything is farmland. All we know is farmland. Farmland is life. Farmland is perfect. Just like those of you that subscribe, you're perfect. I'm trying to reach 1 million subscribers this year. So I really appreciate your help in helping me get there. Please subscribe. I need validation, please. Please, please. Probably should have planted the carrot field before I updated the map, but you know, we're here now and it's fine. The first addition to the Dwarven Cave today for our project is going to be a super smelter. So I'm getting started here by crafting up a load of materials to build this massive thing. This is going to be a 64 furnace super smelter for super speed glass smelting in the future. With tons of redstone components, rails, hoppers, and the works going into this build, this is by far the most complex redstone project I've done yet. My brain already hurts and I haven't even started on it. Now for these frozen mountains to finally be worthwhile, I need a little bit of packed ice. How is the cat up here? We have a very important side mission to take on right now. <gasps> Yay, we have a new kitty cat. Let's go home. Nope, cat, stupid cat. All right, buddy, keep this path safe from all creepers, okay? With everything ready to go and a new friend acquired, it's time to start this project and do what I do best, digging a really big hole. Oh no, I was not expecting that. Okay, yep, that's fun. That's fun to know there's a giant cave back here. Oh, wow, hi everybody. Let's just throw the chest piece on and dive down in here. It'll be fine. Easy mode, back to digging. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was scary. Absolutely hated that. With the whole dugout, it's time to kick this off and start the mega super smelter build. I've got plenty of space to make this happen, so laying down the framework of blocks, hoppers, and furnaces that I do understand up to this point before jumping into the super technical bits here that I'm just following along with the tutorial of Shady J's build. All of the hoppers are in place, the water streams are ready to go, and it's time to move on to placing in the minecart system for moving items around this super smelter. There we go, the fuel track is finally in place. We're halfway done. I miscalculated how many powered rails I need. I completely ran out of them. We have to go find more gold again. Diving down into the caves, get as much deep slate gold ore as I can find. Nearly a stack of deep slate gold ore gathered up and that should be more than enough to finish off the powered rails. There we have it, the super smelter is finished up. We just have one problem we need to solve right now and that is I need to fill all of the furnaces with coal and all of these hoppers. I've got a great start over here already with a load of coal ore I can break down. Back down in the cave, I'm gonna set the beacon back up at its original location and we can fly on out of the very deep hole. To right over here where we still get the beacon buff and I want to start building up a giant block of blocks of coal. Feeling like unfortunately this will still not be enough coal so I decided to set off on a two hour coal mining expedition, gather up as much as I possibly could from the surrounding mountains.
making it back home and I finished piling up all of the coal ore and started breaking it all down so we could get the coal blocks. Two hours later and we have 12 and a half stacks of blocks of coal, which is not nearly enough. First, loading up the fuel chest. I'm going to be a little cheeky here. If we do one stack of coal and fill the rest with our junk cobblestone, it should still work. The sad part is here, even with using the cobblestone, I'm not even halfway through fueling this entire system. I guess we have to go mine even more coal. This time I'm not going for the flare of a massive pile of coal, so we're forging up all of the coal right away. Give me your coal. This cave is now mine. I claim it. Mine. Oh, whoa, look at the, holy cow, this thing is absolutely massive. Oh, it goes all the way down to the deep state levels. What the? This is going much, much slower this time around. I need to find one of those stony peak biomes. That had so much coal in it the first time, as I'm finding a bunch on the stony shore, but yeah, it's fine. The one time I go out looking for coal instead of gold, I find all of the gold blocks I could need. I found one, they do exist. Another stony mountain full of coal. We finally got it. Which brings us up to, oh, we're so close. A little over two stacks to go, I think, and I'm just gonna call it there. If that's not enough, I give up. The grind is beating me. The torment can end. The torment can almost end. That's it, that's the last of the coal. I think it's all done. Crafting up one more time. Oh, we got more than a stack. That means we are definitely done right here. Look at that, a whole nine stacks and even more. There it is, the gatehouse. I've been away far too long and this feels really good. Finally flying back down into the Dwarven cave, I got to work putting the new coal into our smelter system. Every furnace has coal and red extra coal ready to go. And I, have, I still have so much coal. I guess that's good to keep for later. Come to think of it, I don't really have anything to smelt right now. Fueled up and ready to go, there's only one thing left that can break this. Random junk falling in. Throwing a glass ceiling on top of the farm and we should be protected from future flip doing a dumb. From there, filling in the walls with some cobbled deep slate. There we go, finished up on this technical build. Time to move on to something I understand. First step to hide the super smelter, we need a giant forge into the side of the cave. Running down to gather up some cobbled deep slate to build with and finding an insane amount of diamonds along the way. A full inventory of deep slate later and 77 diamonds as well. It's time to get to building. Starting with some platforms to walk along the cave floor and a raised one for the smeltery to sit on top of before starting out with a large brick building that's going to house the smelter. We've got some progress done so far and I wanna change a few things up. For example, this building right here, I think would be better with some slabs for the roof. For the roof on the main building itself, I'm thinking we just use a little bit of copper. And then also right in here, we can bring up a few spots for campfires to make some chimneys coming out of the top of the forge. From there, I threw on the final copper roof and started adding in some windows, even bringing out a new section of the build for some more variety before adding in the mechanical aspects. It wasn't quite perfect yet, so I'm adding in an additional building along the wall using some stone bricks as well as tough blocks for the base layer then a second story out of strip spruce logs and using some deep slate tile on the roof of both layers to just get a little bit more variety in here and of course with our own little chimney then maybe we have like a pipe coming out the side of it with some acacia wood and to make it look more like a pipe we just add in a few buttons and things starting from a boring point in this cavern with nothing except for some torches on the ground we now have the start of a great addition to this build the super smelter. Next, I wanna make it pretty obvious from the outside that this is a forge. So I think we could add in something right out here as almost like a large way for the heat to get out of the forge. Maybe it's being pumped down through this pipe into this section right here, where we just create a little bit of a smokestack and campfires away. Yeah, I like that. That doesn't look half bad at all. Next up, we've got to merge this all back into what we've already built around here. Inspired by every Dwarven fantasy city pretty much ever, I decided to jump up to the walls of the cavern and build some facades for houses that would not be accessible, but they add to the city feel. I think as the next step, we can kind of darken the top of this cave by changing out the torches for a bunch of glow lichen. Also adding in another building stacked up on the others out of brick and granite before adding in some cave foliage and more industrial bits. 
A quick look back in time to where we started with nothing on this wall, and now look at this huge expansion to the city, but we're not even close to being done yet. Okay, maybe one more little small build right over here. Just one more. Just one more build. That's all I need. Just one. With the building complete, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to change the waterfall into something a bit bigger and add in some giant gear wheels in front of it. Taking the water up a little bit higher on the side of the cave, and it's looking so much more impressive. With the smeltery finished up in our dwarven cave, we can finally move on to the final section, merging our amethyst mining system into the rest of this village. First off, we're going to need a bridge coming across this waterfall, which will be feeding into the eventual lake down here. And now we've got the massive build that needs to go over here. Gonna get the little bridge set up for now so I can easily move back and forth. And then I've got to fill in this entire area for the cobblestone that we can walk around on. I'm not quite sure what I want to do over there yet, so I think first step is gonna be expanding our lake throughout this entire area. Creating my own aquifer in the center of this cavern is going to be a great addition as the best mob ever in Minecraft is going to finally have a home. The glow squid. Soon they'll be swimming around here happy as ever before they find a way to suffocate themselves. but more importantly, flooding the lake and creating some small mossy sections along the edge. Never thought I'd like the look of an underground lake so much, but here we are. And it's time to move on to the final section of the cave, starting off with a deep slate building right over here. So we can build up multiple layers as we're going up the side of this cave. Trying to get the same layered effect that we've done previously inside the cave, I think it's gonna be really cool. That's a decent start. Now we just got to put the top on for the roof and give it some more character. First to the roof, I'm thinking we go with some spruce. Dark oak trapdoors on the front and connecting some iron bars all the way down so it's not flat. And a lantern to help keep it a little bit more mob safe as we're working in the area. From here, I want to start working our way up to the second layer that I want to add in. Something like this for a staircase should work out pretty well. We'll get another building down here. After that, adding in a small retaining wall with some tough blocks. All right, there we go. The second building is in place. With the building brought around the corner over here, we can bring in a little bit of our polished granite, stacking this up to be two blocks tall, and then starting to work with some bricks throughout here. And having a three tall block window here in the center with some glowstone behind it. We can use a few slabs here to create the top, something like this. And then probably use some extra slabs there on the corner and then use an extra granite block. And I'm in. This is gonna hurt. Oh, made it. Oh, I don't know how that worked. And we're off on another build, this time on layer two, stacking up another house that can also be used as a way to help blend the minecart track in here. This is looking fantastic so far, and I want to keep going even further up the edge of this cave wall. The way we can really sell this dwarven city civilization under here is by adding in a lot of the gadgets that make it more unique than anything else in the world. Taking a bit of inspiration from the boiler over there, I think I want to throw another one right up here in the edge of the cliff. And now for my crazy idea. What if we bring this all the way over here for a pipe and create a huge tower coming out of this? That way we can hide this guy back here. I think a little covering over here is gonna look great above our railway. This looks really good so far, but I wanna make sure it feels like it's almost disappearing into darkness. For this, I think we can utilize the amethyst itself and create some tinted glass which in itself looks good, except the background's still very bright. And I think we can use gray wool to help out with this. There we go. That is so much better. Oh, I really like it. Back to stacking up the stone brick tower to finish off our final build inside of the city. 
I think from this point we can transition from having a stone base of the tower into moving into the whitewashed one that we've used over there. Getting a rough idea for this new addition of the diorite and calcite tower before flying forwards to complete the entire structure going almost straight into the ceiling of the cavern. With the tower in place, I wanted to make it feel like our railroad is floating more than it currently is. So I'm gonna dig away the ground here a good amount. There we go, much better. Now it's floating all the way across. Starting on the detail phase by removing torches inside of the cavern and replacing them with a lot of glow lichen to draw more attention to the city being the beacon of light inside of this cavern instead of the torch spam. Then taking some time to add in a small dock along the edge of the aquifer for a few boats to sit at. I spent another two hours running around the city, detailing random bits from adding in item frames with compasses and clocks, some hardy barrel spam, wax and copper to certain stages, and adding in tons of glowberries and moss. I'm extremely excited to say that this dwarven villager trading hall is now complete. Everything in here is perfect, except for this. It might not be in the thumbnail shot, but I'm not cutting any corners. I can't leave it like this. We've got to dig this down to finish the entire cavern. First, setting up the beacon in the center, sunken in the ground before going crazy with haste to electric boogaloo and bringing the floor down seven blocks and creating space for another aquifer. As a final step at the base, I want to smooth it out so it looks like we can put some water in here. And trying to clean up a little bit of the diorite and stuff along the way, because we don't want it standing out. Adding a little bit more depth to this underneath the beacon. But going off of that, the next step is going to be to clean up the edges of this hole. Coming from the aquifer, I want to carve this back in, almost creating it like a large bowl. So I'm thinking with the moss over here, we could maybe move it down a block. We'll get some light in here soon, but at least some carpet for now. But there we go. This is looking much better. Just a little bit of slope on it. Time to clean up the beacon and fill this entire place with some water. Really sure how I didn't pop a totem after that creeper, but it's time to put some glow lichen around here to light this place up. I think some moss on this side could also look really good, but I didn't bring any bone meal. Okay, well, I gotta manually place it then. Really? You're in the exact same spot. The exact same spot. Come on now, creepers. Fool me once. All the torches are gone, and now it's time to put a little bit of grass down here. Some of our warped roots just get some more color. And I also want to try adding in a few candles. Just as like a tiny pop of something. Almost like it's a mushroom? I'm extremely happy with this build, but I have to do it before we finish this episode. I have to actually test out the super smelter. I flew all the way over to the desert and grabbed up two shulker boxes full of sand so we could do a quick test on the system. Here we go. I'm really hoping this works. Please don't be broken. Oh, it's emptying. The minecarts move. <gasps> Did it work? They're turning on. The fuel carts go. The glass is coming out. <gasps> oh my gosh. The system works. There we go. Check that out. Oh, I've never had a smelter this quick. Oh, I'm in love. Oh, this is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. With the Dwarven Village complete, it's finally time to move on to new projects and keep the grind rolling inside of this hardcore Minecraft world. 850 days survived, and we've got plenty more work to do. In the 11 years that I have played this game, there's something that I have yet to do. I've never completed all of the advancements ever let alone in a single world. 27 advancements left to go inside this hardcore survival world. Time to take on the challenge. Be sure to subscribe if you're new and leave a like. After all of the massive grinds, digging, building, farming, but mostly digging, my tools are busted. Now these blast furnaces have smelted a good amount of copper and gold, so I'm hoping we get a lot of experience out of them. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't mind if I do. Well, that was easy. I'm going to save that one. While we're going today, let's start off by tackling a few of the simple advancements. We're going to need a music disc, a jukebox, and some leather boots. Nope, I fell in again. Oh, no, not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. But if we put the leather boots on, nice. And I never need you again. To the far side of the mountain, place in the jukebox and the music disc. Next one done. Recently on a live stream while building up some custom trees by the town, I went out in search of a lush cave to find spore blossoms to decorate with. And I came across these three little guys. Oh, don't run away. Don't you run away from me. Fight for me. You're going to fight for me whether you like it or not. Get back in the bucket. Next up, I want to work towards some underwater base advancements. Here we have a guardian temple. I know I need to at least kill these ones for the advancement. There's the big fishy down. Now for the elder guardians. 
Got an underwater breathing potion to keep us going. And hi there, buddy. Get him. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, sponge. Oh, I forgot about sponge. I forgot that's a thing. Oh, he hurts. Oh, he hurts a lot. Two down. Two down. One more to go. Oh, jeez. Hi. Holy cow. There we go. All the other guardians are down. We're good. The other things we need out of here is some tropical fish so we can breed the axolotls and we need a trident. We got some tropical fish right over here. Please. Thank you. I found a drown right away. Go axolotl. Go use quick attack. I found big cave. I had to go in. Ooh, diamonds. Oh, it's a trident boy. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give. I need it. Here we go. We got two more trident boys. Please. No trident. No trident. One more try. No trident. Take four. Can we get the trident? Maybe I need to get hit by it first. Yep, let's try that. No. Day rolled around, so I found some turtles and did some casual backstroke to bring them to shore. Now these turtle eggs, I'm definitely going to be saving for later. Nice. Oh, we got a village. We got a village. Any trident wielders? Give me the trident. Oh my, there's three of them. There's three of them. This has to work. Two down. Trident. Fork. 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 And we're good. Trident secured. Next, taking two of the axolotls. Plopping them right down in here. And I have a bucket of tropical fish. The blue axolotl. It'll be right now. No. I need to throw my trident at something. I missed. I missed. I absolutely missed. Oh, there's a lot of things. Need that back. There we go. Hi, buddy. A goat in a boat. I do need two more goats, though, so I can breed them. Yeah, there we go. Does it scream? You're adorable. I need to breed bunnies as well, and I think I can find some here in the meadow. Carrot for you. Carrot for you. I love it. Another quick one. I need to get some honey from a beehive. Got them. Seven advancements done, and a ton of progress on some big ones. With thunderstorms being pretty rare, striking a villager with lightning will be difficult. So I set up a rail system to have them ready to go before the storm hits. Using the trident, we need to get ourselves channeling. That'll do it. And I also have a loyalty three book here. And that is one shiny fork. Give me some name ideas in the comments. Throwing new villagers in the fields too, and they get an iron golem to protect them. With the rail moving all the way over to the original village, I'm creating two testing pods. One as a control and another with the lightning rod. One goes. Oh, they're moving. And he is in. Welcome to your new home. Now to just wait for a thunderstorm. To kill some time, I removed the awful rail system and dirt bridge from the mountain. Whoa, that, that's curse. Still no sign of rain or storm in the sky, so it's time to do what I do best, build random stuff. I love the design of the last tree, so I'm adding in a few more of them along the river as well, with a random wagon sitting along the pathway, just a way to add some extra life in here and have a spot to sleep if we need it on our travel. In every hardcore episode, I plant a new field around the base to slowly build up enough farmland to feed the future city. This time, it's a beetroot field to keep the variety of color of crops. Also adding in a new footpath between the fields connecting up to our main road. Remember when Fwip didn't ask for subs when planting a field? Fwipwerge Farms remembers. Please subscribe. For real though, as I'm 24,000 subs away from 1 million subscribers. Enough kidding around. Moving on to the next advancement, I gathered up a load of fish to try and complete the catalog. All right, we've got the witch hut over here. Hi, buddy. Do you want to? Yes. Oh, that's a new one. I'm going to rush it. I'm gonna rush it. You ate seven salmon? Seven. Come here. Come here. Accept my love through form of salmon. Yes. Get over here. Aha. You will love me. Returning back to the town, we made a bunch of progress, bringing home five new types of cats, meaning we only have three or four left to get. New cat. New cat alert. Be my friend. New kitty! Flying off to another village in search of even more cats. We don't have that one yet, it's a new cat! Take my love. Take, accept my love. Fishy. Yes. Oh, this is definitely a new kitty. We don't have this one yet. No, don't eat the fish, give the fish. Yes! 10 cats down, one to go. We must find the elusive tuxedo cat to complete the catalog. The search continues, stopping at multiple villages along the way, finding plenty of cats we've already had in our collection with over an hour passing by. We finally have it. The last cat. It's right here. There it is. Tuxedo cat. Love me. Love me. Love me. Yes. Yeah, it's done. Oh, that was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Traveling back home, I came across a jungle and tracked down two ocelots to breed for the two by two advancement with 14 out of 21 done. I can't believe I'm at the point where I already need to repair my elytra again. So we're just going to use the last blast furnace. Yep, that'll do. We can finally take this whole thing down. 
With the sun going down, there's another easy one to pick up. Literally. The bees should all be going into their hives any minute now. And we've got silk touch. There we go. Perfect. I can't keep dragging my feet on this one. Time to dive into the end for another advancement. First, grabbing a little bit more glass. Ender pearls turning into eyes of ender and gas tears to make end crystals. And down we go into the stronghold where I can't at all remember where the portal is, but we'll come across it eventually. I guess I could at least get some bookshelves in the meantime while I'm lost. I walked by this so many times, but we're here. We've got ourselves a new dragon to kill. Let's go. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Bad, bad timing. Very bad timing, very bad timing. Oh my God, very bad timing. Still alive, we're good. There we go. Let's do it. All I've got left are the iron boxes. One down, two down, there we go. Come here, dragon, come here, dragon. Oh, oh God. Oh, we're so close. Oh, we're so close. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, still safe. Why is this so much harder than the first time I killed it? Nope, 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 nope. Heal first, heal first, heal first. There we go, dragon down. I'm ready to leave the end now. I'm all done in here. With the bow skills warmed up and ready to go, we can craft a target block. Placing it right over here. And now for the quick bullseye. Oh, pretty good. I am very, very not good at this. Okay, I can't see anything anymore, so I'm gonna try without a flame bow. That would have hurt. Next try. Oh, that was so close. Right, before I embarrass myself any further. Bows are weird, y'all. Bows are weird. Here I was thinking this would be a simple advancement. What's going on? I thought I was good at this game. Look at that though, we finally got our first phantom. <sighs> nice. For now, I admit defeat. I admit defeat on the target block. Hooking up a really long redstone line and a trapdoor on top of this guy. I put a bunch of these right here in the middle. Hopefully this works. Yay! Look at me, I'm so accurate. Oh, I'm so good at this game. Only 13 advancements remaining to complete them all for the first time. Next up, I'd like to dive into the nether as there still are six advancements I need from that dimension. Getting some crying obsidian, glowstone, we can make a respawn anchor, as well as a fishing rod with a warped fungus, and we're gonna need a compass as well as finding two more ancient debris. Night did just arrive and phantoms are spawning, so let's try that one again real quick. Throw in a boat up there, and hopefully they start flying in any minute now. Oh, there they are, there they are. Not me, not me, not me, no, no. We got one, there's one in the boat. Somebody in the boat. Yes, okay, they're in the boat. Just gonna poke them down here a little bit. Maybe this could be very bad, but the moon's going down, so let's just hope this works. Oh no, they got, oh, they got out. It's all going, everything's, everything's going wrong. At least this wandering trader showed up so we can get another animal breeding done. Can I have your lumps? There we go. Oh, I just hit it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And now we get the baby llama. Perfect. I got another phantom and I wanna see if I can hit it from the bottom. So if I go like this, oh, oh yeah, no, we def, we can get him. Yep, we can, we can get him. Right, smite five, yeah. Night passed again, so we're just headed into the nether. For one, we need to put the respawn anchor down and fill it with glowstone. Okay, it didn't explode. I'm always terrified of those. I don't know how they work. From here, we've got to get a strider Put a saddle on it and take it for a little spin. Okay, big angry boy, follow me this way. Where's your friend? Where's your friend? Oh, I lost the other one. I lost the other one. Oh no. Oh no, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't have my food on me. Why don't I have my food on me? Okay, climb up, climb up, climb up. No, no, I hit the wrong thing. I hit the wrong thing. What am I doing? What am I doing? Not, nothing smart. I'm not doing anything smart. There we go. There's two, there's a lot of them. You take that. Where's your friend? Just, there we go. Okay, okay, they're doing the thing. They're doing the thing. All right, that's done. We can, we can get out of here now. Oh, I hate these. Oh, I hate Crimson Forest. I brought you into this world. I'm taking you right back out. We've got our Strider over here. Put the saddle on him, jump on top, and we can go for a ride. There we go. Nice. Then we can run on over here and hopefully get this guy to follow me. Wow, these guys are quick. Please follow this way. Yep. Come on. Over here. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Why am I in the lava? Oh, God. No, 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 no. Well, okay. We got a new advancement. That's fine. We got a new advancement. All right. I don't know how I got off of the 
Duh. Get that in my offhand now. Okay, advancement cat. <laughs> I'm so over in the nether. I was gonna save that one for last and say, oh, I'm a good player. Nope, they're just, we lost our strider too. He's gone. Can you come over here? You like this, right? Stay in there, please. I need to find your friend. I haven't had many bright ideas today, but this might be one of the least bright ideas I've had. Come on, land it, land it, land it. Yeah. Yes! Oh, I can't believe that worked. And who wants a more fun guy? Yay! I know you're cold, but you almost murdered me. Next up, we need to take the guy with the saddle to the overworld with us. And maybe we end up at a lava lake? Nope. Quite the opposite, actually. What we're gonna need to do is make a 50 block long tunnel of lava. Time to grab some buckets and fill it all in. Oh, no, 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 oh my God. Oh, I hate everything today. Oh, I'm playing so terribly right now. I gotta get it together. All right, there we go. It's all in. Now we get on this guy and we just have him walk forwards and he's through. You found your lava already. Good job, buddy. Let's go. Please be long enough. Please be long enough. Please be not long enough. Yes, we've done it. Oh, feels like home. Speaking of which, welcome to your new home. You're staying here for trying to murder me. Have a flower. Next up, we need a few pieces of ancient debris. There, oh my gosh, finally. We got one. Ancient debris, two. Oh, we're all done. That's it. We only needed two. The ancient debris is smelting away, and I think inside of our stonemason trading hall, we can buy some chiseled stone bricks. With those, we've got another nether ingot over here, and we can craft a lodestone. For the first one, as I tend to get lost in the nether quite often, I think it's going to be worth it to put it on the roof. But for now, we've got a lodestone, and I'm back to trying to catch phantoms. I managed to catch one, and the sun's coming up, but it is raining, so hopefully these dudes will stay alive. But we've got some more chances right here. Get it. Get in the... Yes. Okay. Yes. And they are safe. Now I pull up the health value on the wiki and if I hit him twice with the diamond ax, they should stay alive and then I can punch them once more and they're still alive. Once, twice, punch with third. And take two. Yes. Oh, it worked. Oh, we got it. Oh, that's another one down. Two nether advancements remaining. Ocean brewing and super nether tunnel. Somehow I acquired another biome and I'm only just missing two off of the adventuring time. Let's see if we can get lucky in the nether and just jump out at one of them. I'm thinking we just go that way. This right here should do it. Building up another nether portal. Nice. Oh, we did it. Oh, that's amazing. Since this is all new terrain, I might as well fly around here and see if we can find anything new. There's a new ocean area over here. We might be able to find a mushroom biome. They are islands after all. Oh, there's a second one. Okay, there's a lot out here. Oh my God, it, it's right behind it. What? How did that not load in earlier? We've got the mushroom biome. Is there a mushroom shore biome or did that get removed? Oh, those mushrooms on their head. I might need to fix that one on the texture pack. There we go. We got ourselves a baby mushroom. One biome remaining, and I have no idea what it is, so let's just wander on home for now. I'm so, what the? What, what was that? Cold ocean? Deep, deep cold ocean. Deep, deep cold, deep cold ocean. That, that's what I was missing. How did I never find a deep cold ocean until now? Advancement done. Seven advancements remaining. Some of the most difficult ones to complete still ahead of us. I still need to kill a Ravager, a Vex, and an endermite, as well as breed foxes, mules, pandas, and the regular llama. Taking the safer route, one more epic journey began. I traveled around the world in search of these mysterious animals. Oh my God, we finally have one. There's our first fox. We need to find two though. Hi buddy, do you want a berry? Yeah. I need to go get some leads. But hold up a second here. Mules happen when we breed a donkey and a horse. We can't find them. <laughs> Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> PTSD with Enderman right now. When we get a little baby mule, get on the lead. Get on the lead. I just got bamboozled. I got bamboozled by a fox. Got him. Got him. Okay. We just need to find one more. We've located the second fox on the horizon. Got him. I have sweet berry. I have sweet berry. Baby fox. It's adorable. Oh, my God. I love it. I never expected to spend more than 30 minutes flying around trying to find llamas. They've made them so rare in 1.18. There's only one biome they spawn in. Sorry, it's for the llamas. Oh, no. Not the babies. Oh, God. He's killing the babies, true. Oh, no. For the llamas. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Llama. Llama. There's only one. No. Where's the other llamas? I've searched so long for this one. One llama. This is not an easy burden to bear, but I must do it for the llamas. Another one showed up right up there. We got a white llama too. Llama of the valley, meet llama of the mountain and live happily ever after. One mob left to go, the panda. There's new jungle over here and giant bamboo forest. <gasps> yes, 
pandas, please. Murdering things seem to work to get the llamas to show up, so maybe we try that here too? Just kidding, we have our first panda. Yes, 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 yes. Do you have any friends that are also panda shaped? I wandered the jungle for over an hour, killing every mob in sight, trying to free up space for a panda to spawn. I'm not giving up. I want to do this the legit way instead of spawning in a panda like other creators might. But no, no cutting corners here. I'm sticking here. I'm sticking to it, building up an army of burbs and removing every other mob in the cap until the panda appears. Wait, I'm sorry. What is that? Is that new one? Is that the second panda? He didn't just move? Two of the most beautiful creatures ever. Look at them. They're magnificent. Come over here. If we've done everything correctly, this should be the final pair of animals we need to complete the advancement. Uh, no, I, uh, yep, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. <gasps> no, my burb. I was getting more bamboo. Look at all this nice bamboo. It's nice, isn't it? Feel like home? Feel like, oh, it feels like home. We've done it. Oh my gosh, it's finally complete. Finally back home, it is time to put the burbs in the burb tree. Looking burbier than ever. Moving on to cooking some food on the fire, having some noms, and smashing my face into the ground a bunch. Man, I feel like the evil divers in Nemo, but like worse. I'll just eat this now. Puffer fish to make the ride home a little more interesting. Let's eat some raw beef, cooked chicken. Remind me to not try and land. With only four items remaining, I'm really hoping we have some coarse fruit in here. Ah, yes, we do. Where do we end up? My carrot field. One item remains, the enchanted golden apple. Where I still have yet to find one of these inside my world. One of the rarest items in the game. This is gonna be fun. Flying off, I found a desert biome and started scanning for temples. Temple number one, regular apple. Another one, and no luck. Already found temple number two. No luck, two more apples though. Temple number three, regular apple. Another regular apple. Desert temple number four. Oh God. Oh, that could have been bad. That could have been very bad. That's a series ender right there. We've had too many of those today. Diamonds, but no luck. Temple number five, nothing. Temple number six, nothing. It is nighttime, but my wings are getting very low on durability, so I should probably kill some mobs and repair them a bit. That should do for now. And I found a new temple right over here. Oh my God, we finally got it. Oh, the journey, the journey's over. More than 10,000 blocks away from our home. We can eat the enchanted golden apple. There we go. It's done. I was wandering my way home when I stumbled upon a woodland mansion. We do need to kill the Vex, so... I... Oh, I hate them. Oh, I still hate these. Oh, I absolutely hate Vex. They can go through the floors. I forgot. Got it. Oh, Vex down. We can run. We can run. Two killed. Two killed. Just for good measure. We have the pillager outpost here. I still need to kill a Ravager, but I don't need to complete a raid. And there's a banner boy right down here. I'll take that, please. Thank you. Ha ha ha. Sorry, everybody. Hi. Hi, I'm coming into your village. Hi. Hello, everybody. Run, villager, run. I'm coming. I'm going to save you. Run. There's the Ravager. And a Ravager's dead. Okay, we can leave. Iron Golem, you got this. You got this. You got this. You got this. Goodbye. And there it is. Our way back home. I've never wanted to see this monstrosity of a gas farm so badly. Where for the final mob to kill, we're going to need some enderpearls. We need an endermite. Oh, finally. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. What do I have to kill? 33 out of 34. What is it? Many mathematical calculations later, there's something missing here. Something that should be in the Z's. My worst nightmare, the Zoglin, which can only be created by bringing a Hoglin into the overworld. But that sounds terrifying. Let's brew some potions instead. Low on netherwort, I decided to gather up the entire field and plant it back down so we could have plenty more in the future. I got to work out brewing every potion that I could think of with the materials I had on hand. Next up, we need to get some turtles so that we can get some turtle shoot. I think we can transform this corner of the lake into a little sandy beach. Not the prettiest of things, but it does keep the zombies out. And we can put the turtle eggs down because they only hatch during the night. And zombies want to destroy turtle eggs because they're evil. We've now got every other potion ready to go right here in the chest. We're just waiting on those turtles to grow. Next up, it's time to work towards Star Trader. Oh, we did it. Now we've just got to get a rail line that'll take the villager all the way to the top. All right, buddy. It's time for you to go on an adventure. 
I'll see you up there at the top of the world. The new world hide in Minecraft is ridiculous. But there he comes. Come on up, buddy. And here we have it. Star Trader. Librarian of the sky, you live here now. The view from up here, though. Oh, the base looks so cool. It's time to be a big jumper. We've already got a big hole dug out, so we might as well use this one. There we go. That's that's gonna do it. We gotta land right here. All right, here goes nothing. This is our drop shoot. We're at world height. Bucket time. I've never actually landed one of these. This will be fine, right? I did it! Oh my god, I did it! Advancement cat! I've been sitting here watching and I didn't even notice my turtle's hatched. I have some grass. You want some grass too? We got our first scoot. Look at it. Oh, that's amazing. We just need four more. And now for the second round. Three eggs, please. Three eggs. <gasps> three! Perfect. Just have to let those hatch and grow again. We have so many eggs now, but nothing's hatching yet. Wait! That's thunder! Ah! Quickly, panic! Get the get the druid in! In my time sitting around, I decide I don't want to murder either of those villagers. So let's find these little guys. I just throw the trident here. Yes, we did it! And let's get rid of the witch. One advancement remains. It has finally happened. We have two new babies, so we'll get the big guys out of the way, and then we just start spamming the seagrass on them. And there we go. There's number two. And we got it. Yes, five scoot. Let's get out of here. One turtle helmet wasted on some potions. There we have it. 12 potions ready to drink. Time to drink really fast. Poison. And finally, turtle master. There we go. Furious cocktail complete. We've done it. They're all done. Everything's done. Except this was not the case. As my superpowers faded, I came to realize... There's one advancement still remaining. One box left to check before completing them all. One mob left to hunt down and kill. The Zoglin. For this one, let's first go into the nether, set up a portal in there, and then set up a trap on the outside. I'm thinking we create a portal right here that's gonna be three blocks wide. And then with the coordinates, we run into the overworld and set up a new portal. And we can make the exit portal. And he should hopefully pop out and just chill here. There's a hoglin right next to the portal. This is gonna be great. Come here, buddy. Come here, in the portal. And he's through. Yes. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully he's there. I'm a little worried about the chunk not loading in, but if that happens, we'll try a name tag. Anybody home? No, no, nobody, nobody's home at all. No, absolutely nobody's home. Got another hoglin right over here so we can do a quick round two. Big smelly zombie piggy. Come on, buddy. And he's through. Angry piggies. Angry piggies. <gasps> Angry piggies. I see it. It just went back through portal oh no i saw it okay we're gonna follow okay big smelly zombie piggy yes we've done it Monster. oh we're done that's the last advancement we've got them all with 908 days survived inside this world i now have completed every advancement in the game my starter base has grown into the start of a town i've built a castle to store the world map created a giant gas farm to supply endless explosives, even taking the villager trading hall experience to the next level with a giant dwarven city. And it's time to attempt my largest build ever. And now I'm happy to present the largest project I've ever attempted in a single video. Today's journey began three months ago with gathering resources, chopping down tons and tons of oak logs in order to build the best tree ever. Multiple nights spent chopping after finishing recording for the day to prepare for this massive project. To timestamp this one, you can see the village by the river isn't even built yet. But I had assembled a massive oak log chest monster and it was glorious. Only to decide I didn't want to build a giant oak tree. Instead, I want to use an even more painful log together. Acacia logs. 10 hours of oak log gathering absolutely wasted. Back to square one, starting the grind all over from nothing except a desire to get this right and a ton of acacia logs ahead of us to chop down. I'm winging it on this entire project, so I'm guessing I'll need roughly 18,000 acacia logs in order to complete this tree. Using mostly acacia wood to avoid the orange texture, meaning every four logs I gather turns into three wood. I have to gather an additional 25% of the logs in order to have enough for this project. The Unbreaking 3 Netherite Axe is nearly broken, and I'm only halfway done. But a quick stop at the villagers should fix it up. There we go, time to get back to the grind. 
No, not again. I'm really hoping this is enough wood, but just to be safe, let's replant this one more time. All right, there we go. 18,472 acacia logs chopped down. For perspective, that is more than 10 and a half shulker boxes. Time to move on to the next grind. A tree out of just wood will be boring, so it's time to dive down into the mines and get some accent blocks. Here it is, the beautiful tough block. Ah. While gathering tough blocks to be a darker color on the tree, I was able to find a load of diamonds as a nice little bonus. Dang it. Oh no. There we go, two shulker boxes full. The last item we're gonna need here to get started on the build today is gonna be a few more shulker boxes of andesite. Let's do it. Many shulker boxes of resources have been acquired, and I thought I had everything I needed continuing forward with this build, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. This isn't even close. Carrying on none the wiser, are first starting with a rough dirt circle for the size of the tree stump. To make a tree, we don't want the perfect circle. Spending a bit of time now to bring some of these sections in and pop other ones out to break up the shape of this. And this should be a pretty good idea. I like it. Now this right here is probably looking pretty weird, but I wanted to get a general idea before connecting the points together to create the worst roller coaster in history. And the first blocks of the tree are going down. Just gotta cover the top of this. It is a little under two and a half stacks to make it around once. The entire ring is completed and starting to create some definition with a second layer. Next up, I wanna focus on the root of the problem by connecting this tree into the ground. My thought was to pick some points down the mountain for where the roots would bury into the ground, then build up some connection lines to the top I already built. The plans for this project just kept getting larger and larger, and I was starting to get lost in the blocks. I came to realize just how massive this project really is. So taking a moment to recenter myself, it's time to actually fill in the lines on the front of the tree. Right, we've got a bit of a problem here. I've already used an entire shulker box and some more of acacia wood. That's not even a fifth of the base of the stump. Oh no, what am I getting myself into? Oh, powdered snow. I'm getting myself into powdered snow. Adding in some texture variation is gonna give us a lot of the acacia logs back. From up close, it's a little chaotic, but this build is something that we're building to look good from out here. And I think that little bit of the color in there helps a lot. Next step, and decide on the top. Oh no, it started snowing. No, no, no. I don't want snow everywhere. No, I forgot about that. Oh God, no, no, run away, run away. We can't have snow on this. Now for a lesson in why you should at least test your build palette, this andesite that I thought would be fantastic. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Every bit of it. I've decided for an alternative, we can just use mossy cobblestone. And thankfully we have plenty of this on hand and much better. That blends in a lot more. Back to building the stump. Goodbye, snow. Schnurr. I'm not getting the depth I hoped for quite yet, so we're headed over to the desert to pick up some cactus for green dye. We are gonna need a ton of cyan dye for terracotta for the tree, so I'm thinking it's time to make up a quick cactus farm. 16 cactus per layer should give us a good sized structure that we can house. This was meant to be a quick farm and it's working really well, but it's so big. It's so, so big. With that, I spent another hour fixing the farm, tearing down the top four layers and building them back up right next to it. Next up, we need to surround the farm with glass and add in a collection system. This whole side's an extra block out. Oh, I'm fixing that. I can't leave that. All right, much better. 
And I've seen a bunch of cactus breaking off and we've already got 56. Well, that's not half bad. Well, this cactus smelts down. It's time to get back to working on the stump. The cactus has definitely finished cooking down by now. And there we go. Full snack of green dye. Grab some lapis for cyan. We've got cyan terracotta. This here is gonna be used as our darker shadow color. And it's just a touch darker and I love it. From there, I got back to texturing the rest of the stump. Continuing this idea around the entire thing we have so far. The stump is looking great from the front, but I've still got to do the entire backside of this thing. But first, I want to emphasize the brighter tone on top by adding in some glow lichen on top of the root. We're going to need thousands of glow lichen to cover this entire tree. Another quick detour here to build up a small glow lichen farm by Il Mango to cover all of our needs for this moving forwards. And we got some super shears. Well, if we come over here and just throw a load of bone meal in each of the dispensers and turn it on, we get glow lichen everywhere. Oh, yes. Oh, I like this a lot. Yeah, I didn't cut that at all. I didn't speed that footage up at all. Look at that. Glow lichen has been added everywhere and nighttime is coming. Oh, <laughs> the stump is coming alive. Look at that. Oh, it's so good. Oh, oh, it's so good. Finally time to kick this off into one more massive building endeavor. The plan is set, it's time to build. At this point, I was so close to finishing up the shape of the tree stump itself, so I decided to stay up late into the night, working till nearly 3 a.m., adding in the logs just to keep this moving forwards. Very sad to be saying this, we're down to one shulker box of acacia remaining. We've now completed the entire acacia border on the stump. Another four hours went by as I detailed the stump, adding in tough cyan terracotta, mossy cobblestone, and tons of glow lichen to finally complete the outside of the base structure. And I've got to say, it's looking fantastic. The inside, however, is looking really rough currently as it's completely hollow. I'm fixing this by bringing in deep slate for a trim around the edge and then adding in some magenta terracotta in between the deep slate and the acacia for some color before finally using some birch logs inside of the deep slate for an inner wood color. After that, I want to create some rings in the floor to give this tree some illusion of being older using spruce and oak slabs to keep it a little bit more mob safe. Surpassing the 1000 days survived in this hardcore world while building the stump. I've already spent over 100 days alone on this and this is the smallest part of the project. Resources began to run dry, so back at it again to the gathering phase. At this point, I thought this would be the final grind to get blocks, but little did I know, the largest one hadn't even begun yet. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Oh, there's oh, there's more logs left over. Oh, I don't have to chop that much. Oh, thank you. Good job, Pass Whip, you did great. One, two, almost three. We just need two more. And there we have it, another nearly broken netherite axe. Less than one shulker box remains. Time to go repair the axe and keep on chopping. Before we get back to the tree, there's something very important we need to do. 40 hours into this video and I still haven't planted a field. With every episode, I plant a new field inside this hardcore world. Today, we're fixing up the carrot field by my starter house and planting in a new wheat field by the wolf farm. Be sure to subscribe to see how large the farmland region grows. Jeb Sheep has never looked so majestic next to the brand new wheat field. My inspiration for this tree is from God of War's representation of the world tree. I love how it's shattered in the middle and I wanna use that idea in the future for some stained glass art. Leaving a 30 block space in the middle, it's time to start the trunk. Following a straight path up will be extremely boring though, so we've gotta add in a ton of curves. From here, I wanna start extending out a new branch coming out to the front. And at some points throughout these, they aren't just meant to be one giant branch. We gotta have them split off in different directions. First, I think we start by tracing the outline of this general shape. With the ring done, it's time to give it the shattered feel we have down here, just upside down on this layer. Time to grab some acacia wood and a few acacia logs and start filling in the lines. Maybe after the giant cloud passes. 
Right, we've made it all the way around, and it's time to remove the dirt for a grand reveal. To help bridge the gap between the two parts, I move forward with creating some floating pieces of bark in between to add to the mystical vibe. It's a bit chaotic for now, but I actually really like it. There goes another shulker box of acacia done, and the grind is a go. What the heck? Hi, buddy. How did you get up here? Nothing good. Off you go. Oh, uh, excuse me, llama of the tree. Down you go. Oh, no. Okay, this time. No, still no, still no. Come on, just, just, you know where to go. Yeah. The entire outside of the trunk of our tree is now finished up. The only things left to tackle are the branches and the top of the tree. With the trunk completed, my mind was going numb from staring at acacia logs for so long. It's time to switch gears and do some terraforming, transforming this weird waterfall coming out of the side of the tree into something much more epic. To link to the turtle pond at the bottom, I'm building a bunch of small ponds for collecting water to create a cascading effect. From there, I want to give the illusion of height by adding in some rocky cliff faces where the water is falling to make it appear steeper, which for a quick once over, this is already looking really nice. Now I streamed building this project, so to make it more fun, I traveled out to a nearby lush cave to gather small drip leaf to decorate with. If you were in the stream, hit me up with a hashtag small drip leaf in the comments. As you know, the amount of pain we went through to collect these. Over 40 minutes passed by and I couldn't even get a full stack. <laughs> So instead, we're using some sugarcane, bamboo, and leaves alongside it to help decorate the entire waterfall all the way down to the pond. Everything just needs to grow for a bit down here, but it's time to get back to the tree. The scene is really coming together here, and finally, a lot of the chaotic dirt placements we had are gonna disappear. Far above the clouds now, where it takes three rockets to even get up here. Tackling this grand branch first, I think we can get a good idea of how these are actually gonna work together. And there we have the first major branch that's a little awkward. One, two, three, nearly four shulker boxes emptied out of acacia logs. Nope, five, nearly five. Just taking care of a few mobs inside of the tree. That's not safe at all in here. And hopefully we can safely fly around without any creepers killing us. You can completely do circles in this in this tree. It's that big. Now it's time for the final branch. And we're all done with acacia logs. I never thought I'd be able to say that. We've done it. The branches are in. I never thought I'd see the day. We only have this much acacia log left. Words are blurring together, but we have the tree. Oh my gosh. That is looking absolutely crazy. Things are rather dark inside of here, but I think we need to seal up the top of the tree first. And I'm thinking we copy about the same pattern inside of here, starting off with a layer of the deep slate right along the inside. The deep slate is in, going all the way around. Next up, the strip birch. Was on my way out to chop a bunch down and realized we got tons in here. I'm really done chopping logs today. I really didn't want to have to go get more. And with that, the birch logs have been added to the top of the tree. One more final touch. I thought it'd be cool to repeat the ring pattern we have at the base of the tree on this upper layer too. There we have it, the floor is all done and mob safe. I'm at the point with this project where it's getting so large that I'm getting lost in everything that needs to be done. Oh, wow. With a desire to make things even harder for myself, I AFK'd at the moss farm for about an hour to create loads of mossy cobblestone and mossy cobblestone walls to extend the branches even further. Our first main branch is all done and it's looking really good up here. 
With this main branch done here at the top of the tree, we can start adding in the glow lichen to cover the rest of the top. I spent the entire rest of the day placing mossy cobble bits and glow lichen everywhere along the top of the tree. The detail work was finally finished and we're ready to move on to the next phase. Bringing the texturing up to the top of the tree, adding in mossy cobblestone as the highlights and escaping the grayness that is acacia logs, it's time to add in loads of tough and cyan terracotta like I've already done on the bottom. I can't believe I just made that jump. That was a good job. Good job, me. The only remaining sections are underneath all of the crazy huge branches. Taking a look back, you can see how much effort I've already put into the tree, but now it's time for the longest grind session out of this entire project. The tree is looking fantastic, but it does look a little dead, just like my soul after this grind. Wait, I'm a redhead. I don't have one. Oh, let's keep going. I'm guessing I'm going to need about 20,000 leaves. To avoid the gross biome coloring on leaves, though, we're going to be using azalea leaves. Thankfully, we have the moss farm, which even though it's broken a million times today, it's been working and we've got so many azalea bushes where to get started we need to lay down moss block and azalea bush and spread these out a good amount so that we can get a bunch of leaves and now to also get some rooted dirt out of this thing because i can never get enough trees are grown up and leaves are ready for collection it's time for the big event Well, that is looking pretty sufficiently dead, but we've already almost got a full double chest. Spending some time at the villagers to repair it up, I came back and started chopping down all of the trees and gathering up the rest of the leaves before moving on to a third round of planting and growing trees in order to get the full 20,000 leaves we're going to need. Oh, we've done it. We've done it. Four double chests of leaves are full and so many flowering leaves for a bonus. And now for the great treat of getting all of the rooted dirt along with it. Nice. There we go. This will do to get us started. Four shulker boxes loaded up. And now time for the most anxiety inducing point in this entire thing. Putting leaves on the tree. The way we can tackle this the best here is by picking out one of these branches and just covering that with leaves. Now, outside of that, I have no idea what I'm doing. I will say I want the leaves to be a little bit more pointy out as if each branch is almost a giant leaf. A good attempt for a first try and I've got the idea down. Now, leaf it to me, folks. I've got some work to do. Something extremely sad just happened while I've been building the tree. It looks fantastic, but my yellow bed I've had since day one has fallen and it's gone. I couldn't find it. So now we have the brand new pink bed. The tree's looking fantastic, but I want to see it with a little bit more height on it before I really continue with everything. Ah, oh, I made it. Okay, we're safe. It's fine. I have so many questions. How long has this been sitting here and I thought I lost it? I made a pink bed. I thought I lost you. Oh, my yellow bed is back. This just feels right. I've spent 18 hours placing azalea leaves on this tree so far with more than 9,000 leaves added to the canopy, yet still plenty more to go. Oh, hi buddy. Maybe we don't need you in there. I'm just gonna fill that in. And 
And there we have it. The entire fourth shulker box of leaves have been placed down. We're at the point where the leaves are pretty close to being finished. Next up is the most challenging part where we got to add the bottom half. But I'm in desperate need of some more leaves. This is something I think I can finish up today. So I think I'm going to just be staying up until we get all the leaves on the tree. And do we have any extras? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can do this. We can do this today. Four more shulker boxes filled up. Let's get back to it. One more push. One final day placing leaves on this massive tree, stretching well over 100 blocks above the nearby mountains. One block at a time, this project is slowly coming to a close. I just filled up on leaves for the final time. One branch remains before the canopy of this tree is finally completed. I cannot believe this is finally coming to an end. Sorry, that was bad. I gotta go for a rest. I said I'd stay awake through the end of this tonight and it's 2 a.m. right now, but dang it, I'm staying up until we finish this. Although the leaves are now placed in, but one more step before we leaf it alone. The bottom of this tree is insanely dark and mobs are spawning digging a few holes through our leaves all the way down here should allow the sunlight to come through and there we go no more dark space and now with that it is time for the grand reveal of the tree check that out we've got one section left to do right here in the middle and i want something a little magical we are done with the leaves for now and we get to move on to gathering a load of sand in the morning tools are all fully repaired and ready to go we got ourselves two full netherite shovels and this is the spot where all the sand comes from six shulker boxes ready to go first one down Mining, mining, we're mining the sand, mining the sand. And back to swag. Nom, 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 nom. Last shulker box to go, and we're out of here. And here we go. The final box is now full. Six shulker boxes of sand. This desert is really starting to look devastated from all the sand mining. In the Dwarven City now, we can pull out the sand and throw it here inside of our super smelter. And there we go, the glass is already coming in. Well, this chest here is filling up with all the glass, we can head over to the librarians, repair the tools, and get some new glass from trading. We now have all six shulker boxes smelted down for some glass, and I traded for another with the librarians. I need magenta dye and end rods. Bone meal in hand, headed to the lilac field for the first. And most importantly, how many end rods do I have? A stack and a half. Any in here? No, that's definitely not enough. We're going to have to go to the end. But first, let's start by trying to place some of this glass down. My plan is we follow the inside line that we created with all of this stripped birch log. Next, we land on top of this glass and pillar ourselves all the way up to the base of the tree. And now we just got to do this all the way around the tree. And here we have it. The final ring of glass is in around the entire tree. For the first time in nearly 300 days of hardcore Minecraft, we can see what it looks like. And I love it. That is fantastic. I've still got four shulker boxes of glass and a little bit more left over in here. So what I would like to do next is turn this into a foggy effect where the center of the tree along the beacon beam is a little bit more cloudy. But first, we need to load more end rods. It has been quite a while since I've been in the end dimension, but we've got to head out to one of the cities and get all the beautiful end rods. Well, this is a nice little surprise. Diamonds and more gold and a diamond chest piece. Since I'm building this from the outside in, I've kind of lost my way inside of the tree. So hopefully we can just dig in right here. No, yes. We're in. And now we can just dot in some of the end rods around the circle. And even this might be a few too many. I don't want this entire thing to be lit. Just the number of people liking the video are. Insert cool guy sunglasses over face here. Bring ourselves back a few more blocks over here, following the outline of the spruce. And then we continue the magenta glass all the way to the ceiling.
Placing this acacia log back in here means the tree project is done. I can't believe I'm finally able to say that the mega tree, world tree, whatever the heck tree build this thing is, is finally completed inside of the hardcore world. Down here on Y level 110 is the bottom of the roots where the tree goes all the way up high into the sky to 200 and 72. I just built a 162 block tall custom tree and for the first time seeing it bright and shining in the dark. Oh, that looks so good with the moon behind it. Over 300 days spent building a tree, more than 40,000 blocks placed and well over 50,000 blocks mined. The world tree stands tall over my hardcore Minecraft world and it's now complete. This thing has taken so many hours to complete, so please be sure to leave a like down in this video. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Will we do this big of a project again? I don't know. Depends on how many likes and subs we get off this thing. I spent over a month working on this. Come on now, I can at least clickbait a little bit asking for likes and subs. It's fair at this point. I think after you had a certain hours put in, it's valid. In an effort to return to building the city around my starter base, I need blocks. You better see scribe as it's time to get fishy. For today's project, I recently posted a poll on the channel asking for feedback on what to build next. And well, I thought about it. Today, we're clearing an ocean monument. I really want prismarine blocks to build with, and we're gonna need them for the ones I had listed. Plus, brain broken tree too big no more brain power to think only place sand and be fine one problem though as my rocket box is completely empty first a quick stop at the sugarcane farm where we hopefully have plenty yes yes we do and over to the egg powered gas farm where we also have plenty of gunpowder this will be perfect much better that feels much better we might find some hobbits around the base soon because we've got plenty of doors and the last item is just gonna be a little bit of milk from the cows flying away from the base we do have this ocean monument ready to go right next door to spawn but i'm a little worried that it's almost too close so i'd like to scan it real quick and see if there's maybe a sponge room in here no luck so far on a sponge room but we've got a gold room in here time to get out of here oh yeah really time to get out of here these guys hurt headed west there's another ocean monument i always fly over except this time i can't seem to find it there it is the second guardian temple hopefully we've got a sponge room in here let's get inside there's definitely still elder guardians so we've got to move quick we don't have fatigue yet, so we can get them. Maybe we can keep going. Oh, he hurts a lot. Oh, they hurt a lot. Let's use the fork. Oh, yeah, we're using the fork in here. Oh, I lost my fork. Woo! 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 They do a lot of damage. Nope, nope, nope. We don't want to be killed. He's down. Ah, I never put impaling on the fork. That's why it does no damage. That all makes sense now. <laughs> Ah, who even needs a trident? Now, please tell me there's a sponge room. Yes, netherite hoe is a go. Let's get all of the sponges. 33 sponges. 30 sponges won't cut it no matter how porous they are. And we're in. It's definitely a new one. There's a big fish. Hey, buddy. One down. There he goes. He's down. Another monument cleared. There we go. 72 sponges so far. Oh, that's a big fish. That's a big fish in my face. Yes, another one down. Swimming around the post and hit. And around the post and hit. Around the post. And we got him. It's like a nice little dance. He's down. Oh, that really hurt. Nice. Another another one down. Another one down. No, 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 no. And sponge room. Yes, 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 yes. 108 sponges down. Oh, he hurts. He hurts a lot, but he's dead. Stupid fishy. Yes, he's down. Clearing out two sponge rooms inside of this final monument, I now have just over two and a half stacks of sponges. A quick little trip into the nether where we can dry out these sponges in the most beautiful Minecraft ASMR method possible. These will go in here for later. The first step to clearing out an ocean monument is removing all of the kelp and seagrass from the monument. Guardians only spawn within the perimeter of the temple. But to make this look even better, I want to clear out a large circle around this. Going to plots.co.uk, I was able to generate a map for a circle with a diameter of 128 blocks. Back at the base now where I'm able to grab some of our leftover potions, we've got invisibility and water breathing. But we're gonna wanna add some redstone to these. Make them last a touch longer. Well, those are brewing 
way we can craft a conduit for us. This is going to be a massive circle, but I am really excited to build my own ocean empire here soon. First, we just need to recreate the perimeter in game. So take an invisibility potion, stack of blocks, it's time to go. The plus shape is now in and I just got to get the circle going around this entire way. First quadrant's now done and we just got to pick up on the next one. four five six seven eight and second quadrant's done there's the third and here we have it the final ring is now completed this is a very big circle with the second invisibility potion we're gonna take that right now diving underwater to set up the conduit along the side of the monument i just need to run around now and break all of this kelp inside of new perimeter we've created Monument's now done, and I've got about two minutes left on the invisibility, so I've really got to hurry this up. Little messy up top, but all of the kelp is now gone from the sea floor. Uh, I missed one. Now it's all gone. I think. I hope. I probably missed some. Removing the guidelines, and we can move on to the next phase, bringing a glass perimeter around this entire circle. It's a pretty long trip to get home, so let's head into the nether, break this portal down, and getting ourselves all the way up to the nether roof, we just need some ladders right here and throw it up like this ender pearl and we are on top nice oh there's the gas farm but if we rebuild the portal right over here we can get back to the guardian farm and a very quick way home crafting 12 shulker boxes it's time to head out to the desert for the coarse rough stuff that gets in everything I think we've done it. The first row of four shulker boxes is full. Oh boy. And that shovel's getting very dead. An archeological dig site has now begun as we reveal the rare desert pyramid. Remember when archeology span was gonna be added to this game? Whipbridge Farms remembers. Eight shulker boxes now full. And here we have it. The 12 shulker box is full. Oh, that's a lot of items. I'm going to start by throwing two more shulker boxes worth of sand into the super smelter, which will mean we have a total of four shulker boxes of glass. From here, we're gonna need a load of light blue dye. So I think we'll do six stacks to start out. One shulker box of light blue, but unfortunately could not finish the second. We'll see how far this takes us for now. We've got glass and we've got sand. Wait, I just had an idea. So if we take the circle and divide it with three lines, we can position six towers along the edge. Now I just need to build these out here along the edge of the circle, then we can start with the glass. This will work great for the towers. Right, that's just over seven stacks of concrete for the base of each tower. Second tower is now done. Third tower is now done, which means we just need to replicate this on the far side. Next one's done. Come on, buddy. There you go. Oh, he's happy. There we go. All the tower bases are now done. I think it'll be best to swim down and start tracing the pattern along the bottom of the ocean. With the six sections we created from the towers, I'm able to break this project up into smaller ones for the tiny serotonin boost from finishing each of them. Instead of staring at a giant project, this helps me to stay a little bit more motivated. There we have it, second section is now done and the sunken ship is fully inside. We're gonna have to do something with that. The third is now done as well. And we're out of glass, almost a third of the way done with the fourth section. But I think there is a swamp biome up here to the north. What is going on here? Why are there no blue orchids anywhere? Clearing out some of this grass and much better, actually getting flowers. That took absolutely way too long, but we've got five stacks of flowers for a bunch of light blue dye. Crafting up even more light blue glass, I continued on with the fourth section of the perimeter wall, which is now done as well and flying on to the fifth. And 
And there we have it. The final side is done with these last glass blocks going in. And I gotta say, it looks really massive. Now for the fun side of, we have to drain this entire area. I guess we just grab the sand and get going. Starting sand pillars that are gonna go all the way across. This is gonna be painful making a little four by four boxes like this guy right here. We can come in afterwards and drain it really quick with some sponges. I've been at this for about 30 minutes now and we've got a lot of sand placed down, but it is going so slowly. I think I know something we can do to make it a little bit quicker. All we're gonna need is one repeater, one torch, one dust, and a piston. Now filling up on sand again, torch here, repeater, dust, netherrack, piston, and place. Oh yes. Oh, this is gonna be so nice, except so loud. This is really, really just getting in the way, boys. The entire first row of lines that we've had since the piston is now completed up, and this has taken less than an hour to do all of this, where that little section in the beginning took me an hour and a half. Ow. No. Dang it. Ah. With all my sand placed down, I picked up the shulker boxes, moving over to the monument, and got to work on draining everything we have so far to be able to reuse my sand supply in the future instead of needing to harvest over 150,000 sand. That is a load of wet sponges over here and a very dead elytra. But we got a very good amount drained so far and it's it's progress, it's it's progress. Welcome to ASMR sponge drying with Quip. I hope you feel relaxed and recentered after this beautiful sound of sponge drying. Well, there's no time for a break here. We have an ocean to drain. Sponges, torches, pick up sand. 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 Everything I could have cleared so far is now cleared. And we've just got to put all the sand back down. Probably three or four more times. Finishing off day two of the project, drying out the sponges one more time, I was off to bed to get some rest before diving back into this project. Day three of the project began with placing all of the sand back down. The closer we get to the center of the monument, the more dangerous it gets as the guardians are spawning everywhere. Ah. Countless hours spent making trips down to pick up more sand and flying back up, placing it down over and over again. Ah. Ah. We've touched the butt. We've touched the butt of the monument. Oh, this is good. We're making so much progress. Most fun thing you can ever do in Minecraft. Oh yeah, going all the way back down there. All right, new plan, new plan. There's too many fish around here. I think I just need to like build a little wall every time I set up the new system. That should keep me safe, right? Another three hours spent placing sand and it's time to drain it all out with some sponges and keep moving. You know how that catchy tune goes. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand, dry. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand, dry. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand. Sponge, torch, sand, sponge, torch, sand. Was that a lot? Yeah. But what you didn't see is I spent over 13 hours today while I continued to place down sand that we mined up and drain out even more parts of the giant waffle until I could finally see almost half of the monument. Ah, he's over there. Ah. Right down there is the start of the monument. And that final line I just put in down there, that's the edge of the monument. Realistically, I only need to clear that. Why did I more than double it in every direction? I don't know, but uh, I'm already committed. We're just gonna keep going. I'm extremely happy to say we are much more than halfway finished now. Look at this, almost the entire monument is now revealed, which means the fishies will stop spawning outside of it at least, but it is back to placing in even more sand. I guess we've broken the world, probably because we've moved almost 60,000 sand around at this point, but time to pump up those numbers even further. Tackling the shallow section of the perimeter, I placed all of my sand back down one more time to get ready to remove the guardian spawns completely from this area. 
To save you all from the new hit single, Sponge Torch Sand, here's the time lapse. Every pocket that can be drained is now fully drained. We've just got this one final section left, and I really think with all the sand I got in there, we can probably finish all of it. It's gonna be close, but I think we can manage it. But only one way to figure out. Back to placing more sand. I'm really starting to understand Anakin at this point in time. Just got back from a weekend away, and of course I have a little bit of a cold now, but I've been placing sand down like crazy because I don't really need to talk during it. With just under two shulker boxes remaining, we're getting so much progress done. Ton more space to drain over here. Finally able to reveal about 80% of this entire perimeter. Ah, what the? Duh! Where did a slime come from? Don't tell me this is a slime chunk down here. Okay, well, um, that's good to know, I guess. Look at this. This is all we have left to do. Back to place in sand. Oh, what the heck is happening here? How much sand did I just waste? What is, what is this? I thought everything was going right. And what happened here? My sand? <gasps> there was a kelp. One kelp, one kelp ruined it all. You miss one piece of kelp and this is what happens. Well, fixed it, back to more sand. One final session of placing sand to finish the waffle before finally being able to move on and for the last time of this project, drain out the ocean itself. Over four days IRL spent perfecting sponge torch sand all coming down to this moment. The moment where the final sponges are placed Torches are plopped down, causing the last of the sand to fall, revealing the monument standing dry and mighty in the sunlight. Everything is ready to go outside of the well inside of the temple, which is still very much full of water and guardians. But I need a break. We'll come back to that in a minute. We have some very, very important things to do first. You may remember a while back, I added Graves into my hardcore world to show who we have outlasted with names like Grian, Smallish Beans, Good Times with Scar, Pixel Rifts, Solidarity Gaming, and Looney. It's time to add another name into our world. My good friend Mythical Sausage recently died to an iron golem 800 days into his own hardcore world. First off, we need some yellow banners and to hopefully find a loom around here somewhere. Ah, there we go. And here we have the banner of Mythical Sausage with no better place to put this than a tiny hot air balloon somewhere flying high in the sky. Fortunately, the banners don't load in until you're all the way up here, but it looks really cool when you're flying next to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now for the other extremely important task that we haven't got into in today's episode, planting a field. But also a quick update here as I live streamed a little while ago and, and built up this really cute little farmhouse over here and it's absolutely adorable with a custom birch tree and moss on log. With that, have you checked if you're subscribed? A lot of you watch my videos, but less than half of you are actually subscribed. I really appreciate if you do that as it helps me out a ton by telling YouTube people enjoy my videos. Also, if you wanna see the live streams, ring the notification bell. I've never said that before, that felt weird. Okay, back to Minecraft. Bunches in hand, time to start draining from the top down. Okay, this is so far so good. No. Oh. Right, I'm a little scared about this room. First, we take out the fishies. And then we hope placing sponges works. Kind of, yeah, progress. It's gotta be quicker than that. No, that didn't work at all. Drying out the sponges, I got back into the monument and started clearing out the rest of it, taking another hour or so and a few zaps later, but finally, there's no more fishy business here. Next step of the project is to tear down the entire inside of the monument so that we can build ourselves a guardian farm, keeping the outer structure still intact. Setting up the beacon out in front of the monument, it's time to get inside and break down some walls. So now that I've drained the entire monument and ocean, I realized the best way to build this farm is to build a near identical version of the top of the monument farm that doesn't involve draining. It'll just be inside the monument. First off in the nether, I need a ton of soul sand. I also need a ton of glass and thankfully we have shulkers full of sand and we can drop these inside the super smelter. 
crafting up everything else while they smelt down. Now to just wait for the glass to finish. Eventually, I want to transform this entire monument, but to be honest, this is one of my favorite vanilla Minecraft structures, so I don't mind leaving it as is for now. Now, here's the fun part. I need to make a giant glass box full of water inside the monument. So we'll get something a bit like this. Since guardians can spawn down until this prismarine layer here, we just replace this with soul sand. Next up, we stack up glass as far as we can until we hit the ceiling. Glass is all in place. Time to add in the temporary layer throughout here with some more soul sand. With that in, I added our fence gates and water going around this entire place to flush the guardians into the center. Everything is ready to go. We just need a load of kelp to finish it, which we can grab right out here. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a lot of fish. Oh, we have a big problem. Flying away was a big mistake. Before I can do anything, I need to take out all of these fish. No, it's not working. This is not going to be good. Oh, that's how they're getting out. There's no glass around the back edge. That makes a whole lot of sense. But now for the fun of we take the kelp and cover the entire bottom. I'm going pescatarian purely for the vengeance of wanting to eat all of the fish ever. Next up here, we need to bone meal all of the kelp. Doing it outside like this might actually be the safest way to go. Oh no. Yep, that's not good. Okay, uh, how do I fix? How do I fix? How do I fix? The water's all one block too high now. Right. I think I wasn't supposed to remove the temporary blocks until the very end at the top. Finally, the soul sand temporary blocks are back in place so we can fix this thing. It's been a little dangerous up here, but we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. After fixing up the top, I jumped back inside the giant glass box and cleared out all of the kelp to finish up the farm finally. Things didn't go very well though. That looks super chaotic inside, but everything should be fixed up now and ready to go. Installing these blocks of glass along the bottom should mean the farm is functional. To test this thing out, we've got to go high into the sky and build a little AFK platform. Fishies should hopefully be dying like crazy. Yep. One hour later, and how much prismarine do we got? Please be worth all the effort. Please be worth all the effort. Ooh. That seems pretty worth the effort. I'll be honest, you can probably tell in my voice, but this cold is kicking my butt. Oh, that's a beautiful sight there behind us. Please subscribe. I built entire towns, drained ocean monuments, assembled massive structures of obsidian, and built a world tree. I've done a lot of really cool stuff, but the Minecrafty side of my base is, well, uh, lacking. Today, I am building the first storage room inside of this hardcore world. A log mill to store all of the wood-related items and making space for the new mangrove wood coming soon. As with every episode in this world, it's time to plant a new field. Last episode, we added the new potato field down by the lake, where you have nothing. This leads and new llama friends. Today, we've got a big terraforming project bringing a mountain stream from all the way down there there connecting into the lake. So I think we use the empty space over here to build the field. And I've got a fun idea. We need Lily of the Valley flowers. So crafting up a ton of pistons, note blocks, observers, dispensers, and other redstone goodies, we're off to find a flower for us, which I believe we have one out here along the edge of the ocean. Step one, we need to find where the Lily of the Valleys are spawning. The best way is to take some bone meal, clear out the natural flower spawns, and start spamming the bone meal until we get them. I found every type of tulip, cornflowers, oxide aces, poppies, dandelions, you name it, but no lilies. Even filling in the lava pool, covering it up with grass to get even more chances. I feel like they're right in here, but it's bugged. Look at this. I'm using the bone meal, but no flowers or anything are being created here in the middle. This is where the lava pit was, but I filled it in. I just wanted to make a pretty field. The only thing seeing me through on this and not just planting a wheat field is my own stubbornness. And dang it, we're going to find Lily of the Valleys. That's not how we find them. That is absolutely not how we find them. The one time I want to use Lily of the Valley, they don't exist. They're right there. We found them. They're right here. I wasted so much time. They're just... Nope. Please, 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 please respawn. Please don't do this to me, game. Don't do this to me. You've got to be kidding me. No, it's white tulips. I went back home to do a quick think here, but look at this. We've got another one right next to us. And maybe, maybe this flower forest will have some. Oh, I see some lilies. 
I have 38 pieces of bone meal left. Even if we find a spawn, there's no way I can get enough for a farm. Lilies do spawn in forest, birch forest, and dark hog forest. So I started exploring to pick as many as I could find. I see them. I see the beautiful flowers. Look at them. Oh, I see more. Oh, they exist. This will bring us up to 37, 30, 37. Locked on and we're swooping in for the flowers. Oh, there we go. Over three stacks. That took so long, but it's finally time. Finally time to plant the field. Have you checked if you're subscribed? I recently passed 1 million subscribers, but still less than 50% of you watching this video are actually subscribed. So please double check for me as it helps me out a ton. This might just be my new prize possession inside the hardcore world. Mega tree who? Lily of the Valley flower field. I mean, look at this thing. It's gorgeous. Planting a field supposed to be like our free 20 minute thing and we spent hours. I mean, that deserves a like, right? Right? We do now have a flower farm in a box though, which is pretty cool. Before we can do anything here, however, my Elytra is literally falling apart. So I've got to repair it before I go splat much better to create an effective storage room for wood we need a few redstone things an item sorter because i shouldn't do it myself a shulker box unloader for space to create a new shulker monster finally a transportation system to move things from point a to point b to accomplish this i need a ton of redstone related goodies from stacks of hoppers chests observers droppers comparators repeaters complicators multipliers redstone dustifiers redstone torches and you name it we got it for the sorting system so it's easily accessible from the base i want to put it up here on the side of the hill so we have a bunch of space to work with we're going to bury it down here a touch and as a way to know which log is going to be in which chest we can throw them all here down on the ground with mangrove wood definitely being that and perfect now we just need to build a sorting system around this entire thing Assembling the redstone sorting system, I went for aesthetics instead of efficiency so I can build this thing into an awesome structure. Raising the sorters into the upper level and handling all of the redstone wiring up here, I think it's going to be a lot better for the building side. Next, I went through the process of setting up all of the filters, adding in the log type and the filter blocks to stop anything else from going through. To solve the problem of getting items all the way up there so they can actually be sorted, we need to come through here and create a dropper elevator. With a redstone clock at the base, doing a little something like this. Next, because a smart person told me to do this, I need to add composters on top of every hopper. Then if we throw these dark oak logs into the bottom dropper, eventually they should end up in here. And yes, the system works. We're missing one. Moving on to the final element, the shulker box unloader. I don't even know how this works. This design is by Samos the Sage, and it just does magic and unloads things. It's great. I don't, I don't know what to say. If I hook the line up correctly, we should see it in there. Yes. Items are getting pulled out, and they are going up the dispenser. So those should all end up in the varying chests in a little while, and eventually it'll hopefully be in this barrel. Otherwise, I did it all wrong. Please be right. Well, the shulker is sorting. I wanted to clear away a good chunk of the mountain so we can build the log mill and come back later to terraform and fix it up. With the sorting system ready to go, we've got to build a structure around this to house it. So I want to create the lumber mill. I'm trying to learn how to upscale my building, so this should do great. Next up, we need resources to build the thing. Hold up, I was clearing shulker boxes. I have six regular diamond ore. That's the rarest block in the game. We cannot break these, they are sacred, but this stupid deep slate diamond, boring. Back to gathering resources where I need a ton of spruce logs. And this should do it for the spruce. Next, we're flying on over to the dark oak forest. Dark oak wood acquired and a load of birch too. Don't worry, eventually I'm gonna build my own custom birch forest. On top of this, I also need a bunch of mushroom blocks. This should be enough. Loaded everything into the storage room for now. And that should be all of the wood we need. Next, we need a ton of stones. Thankfully, I've already got granite, terracotta, tough blocks, and a site. Next up, I need a load of bricks and dripstone blocks. Grabbing a few emeralds from inside of here. Oh, we've got plenty. And down to the stone masons, where we can trade for the dripstone blocks and a load of bricks. 
all out of emeralds, but that should do it. One more item I need is actually going to be a bunch of oak logs. But thankfully, we still have excess over here. Which I decided to bring all of the oak logs over. So hopefully we never run out. Step one, we're going to tackle the foundation of the structure. Grabbing the andesite and a ton of tough. I think it'll be good to bring in the foundation that we've used throughout the rest of this area, but having it on different layers for the different structures that we're incorporating. So it's not just a harsh flat line. The base of the structure is now in, and I want to spend some time focusing on the front upper layer to get the full idea of what this will look like from the valley. Starting on the front of the build, I want to add in an archway throughout here. So we have a big entrance to be able to fly right inside the storage room. And then we do some strip logs here on top Then using a Tudor ish design like we've done so far in in the rest of the houses, we can extend this out a block and start pillaring up the logs. With the next layer done, I want to start incorporating a little bit more detail as we move up. For the cross beams, we can throw in some dark oak trap doors. And now we incorporate the mushroom block and revealing the cool inner texture right like this. Well, moving forward to complete the entire front face of our new lumber mill. With our front created, I want to copy that same idea around over here to this side and bringing some spruce along the back here so we can have a divider between this and our brick down below. Eventually, we'll bring all the roof lines together, but for now, let's just get the front faces in. And back up on the other side. Yeah, that's looking fantastic. Just time to bring it around every other side. One small problem has come up. I've been trying to lay out the rest of the foundation and well, the shulker box unloader is sticking out a little too far. So I think what we can do here instead is build up its own structure around it, just using some of the dripstone blocks. And if I can get lucky, we can just throw in some dark oak slabs and it's hidden. Now over here, I think it's gonna be quite boring if we do the exact same thing. So instead we're gonna pillar up a load of spruce over here, which hopefully doesn't break anything then we have another large entry door inside of here now bringing in some more of our spruce stairs and slabs and have the slabs step up into the middle inside of the gap i thought it'd be fun to just bring in a little bit of the brown mushroom block and leave it as is from here things get a little interesting as it's going to be inching all the way up to the top oh i made it to the top right there so we've only got a little divider then we stretch the slabs all the way down On the inside, for some detail, we can throw this in along every single one of our arches that we've created. And now it's not flat anymore. From here, I finished adding the wood walls to the second story and outlined the roof and decorated the sides a touch further. To make it feel like this area is very functional and things are happening, I want to add in some chimneys to give ourselves some life using the soul fire campfires so that they don't glow as much. And that'll be perfect. Now I planned out the roof a bit and it's going to be awesome. I want to use an earthy gradient going from brown terracotta to rooted dirt, which means we need a lot of cocoa beans. I'll find a better home for this later, but we can at least get a small farm going so we don't completely run out of these. And now we wait for them to grow. Ah, while that's going on, I need some brown wool. We've got plenty of dirt, rooted dirt, a quick trip to the guardian farm because I need to bring some of the sand home, which is all stored right back here. Oh, how did you get up here? No, thank you. That is not good. But with this, we can craft a bunch of brown concrete powder, bone mealing some cocoa beans, and we can hurry this process up. We need a load of brown terracotta too, and to turn a stack of the powder into brown concrete. And here we have the final gradient, brown terracotta to rooted dirt. We gotta just put it on the roof. Cause I forgot brown concrete powder will fall down. So we've got to put an inner layer on the roof. Well, adding in the strip dark oak logs, I decided it would look nice to break up the symmetry on the roof by adding in some small windows, two on the side looking down the mountain and one on the side looking back towards the starter base. Even with just the strip dark oak logs in here, it doesn't look half bad, but it's time to add in the gradient, which gives us something a little like this. Time to do this across the entire building. 
I'm in love with this roof, but I want to introduce a little bit of color and a way to keep it a bit more mob safe. So adding some of our nether sprouts up here, as well as some glow lichen, I think we can achieve it. Not going too overboard, just as if a little something's growing on the roof. The structure is now complete, but it doesn't really look like a lumber mill yet. I want to add in a water wheel, bringing in some terraforming. I believe this will be the best if we start from the top where the water comes in. End goal, saw blade right here. Have this come out. We can attach it to a belt and bringing the mountain back even further. We can build a giant water wheel somewhere back in here. For that, we do need some water. So I planned out the path for the river to connect down to the lake and continued with cutting back the mountainside to give myself more space to work with. With a good amount of this area cleaned up, we can actually start to create the riverbed out of coarse dirt. Chickens, you're gonna stay down here. Now, before we send any further, I gotta get the riverbed down there. And of course, it's all turning to ice. A quick fix is just putting some seagrass in. The river is definitely coming up a little bit higher than I intended, so we're gonna need to install a barrier along it, but I'm thinking here in the center, so I'd like to bring in some more cobbled deep slate along here. And don't worry, soon the front of the build will not be floating. But till I have a better idea, this will work for our barrier. While in place, I wanna clean up the gross wall on the far side of the river, adding in more depth into the cliff faces so it doesn't look so bad. Before moving on to finish off the entire river, stretching all the way down to the lake, and adding in some custom rock along the way. Do you ever get to that point in a Minecraft world where you're like, I'm sleeping every 30 seconds because the days are flying by? Because that is me right now. I am loving this build. It looks so dang good. We unfortunately did uh, lose our road over here. We're going to use these to build a nice little bridge across for the carts to get over just with some trap doors along the edge. And done. We've now connected the lake all the way up to the top of the mountain with the river. Taking inspiration from the dwarves underground, we can utilize the technology we developed there to show the two groups working together and build one of the large copper wheels for our water mill with a little bit more wood built in. Nice, I think that looks really good. Now on the inside, we don't have too much space to work with. So we can bring a beam in across here, chisel deep slate in the middle, and this is gonna be the saw. Don't touch, deadly. Now we're able to rotate it and support. From here, campfires in the middle, and we now have a track for the logs to be pushed along with some sawdust on the ground. Functional standpoint is now in. We'll come back in and detail this out a little bit more in the future. You guys, a much bigger problem we have is, well, um, it's floating. The entire thing is floating. Currently, I do have loads of stone, so we're good there, but I'm out of dirt. All I got really is that. Wait, we have another box. Is there any in this mess? Oh, yes, there is. Finally, after gathering all these blocks, we can put them back down. I totally forgot about doing this, and I realized when I had small drip leaf in one of my sugar boxes, we gotta decorate this little riverbed out. Few drip leaf and blades of grass later and some sugar cane and it's already looking so much better. But with that, it's finally time to get to work on this project. I want to start by creating the pathway that our road is gonna be following, reaching to the starter house. The route for the road is now in ready to go and I've installed a small retaining wall, running into one small issue now, as I only have 35 gravel to my name, which doesn't make too much coarse dirt. So in an effort to turn this entire roadway into coarse dirt, time to grab an empty shulker box and the silk touch shovel. We're off to find some gravel. I ran back over to the guardian farm where I knew there's some gravel sitting on one of the beach cliff faces. This should be plenty. See, we made a storage room. It's perfectly functional. From there, I got to tearing up all of the dirt I just placed down to fill in the coarse dirt for the road. Time to break out the dirt and the stone one more time and connect us to the ground. Spending quite a few hours on this, I got to thinking. Thinking about what I can use my second channel, Flip 2, for better moving forward. So pulling back the curtain here, what do you want to see on that channel? There's going to be a world tour and a download available for all of the members for this hardcore world next week sometime. But I'm thinking tutorials for small builds I do and behind the scenes content. But let me know what you would like to be seeing as we're wrapping up this terraforming project. This build is looking better than I could have imagined already. There's one more element to add in, a large windmill sticking right out of the roof. 
with our base support frame installed we can start working our way up here and bringing it to a central point now with the strip dark oak beam we can start the transition grabbing in some acacia trap doors and just adding a little bit of like a color highlight along here there we have the base with a bunch of highlights here in the uh, bright orange acacia trap doors now it's time to put on the blade there she blows well if minecraft had wind it would but uh there she sits next up we need to move on to the interior of the windmill first off i'm gonna get rid of the shulker box mess to right outside now we need to finish off the sorter as it just kind of stops extending this wall out we can fill in barrels all the way back here to connect some hoppers from here, I'm going to manually sort everything into different barrels as we're going to have a ton of different types of items. I don't expect to have as much of each to fill an entire box, so we'll just put them together. With that connected, we can now move forward with decorating everything and surround the rest of this room with even more barrels. We can use a small dividing wall right over in here with an archway to help divide this off from the rest of the mill. Changing out the floor as well can help it feel a little different. And the first section is now done. Next, I want to duck in behind the scaffolding and add in some gray and light gray stained glass. A similar idea on the second side, and now we're ready to tackle the middle. Picking up some extra hoppers over here. We can now hide a barrel so we can just drop items in directly instead of shulker boxes. But there we have it. The storage room is now fully completed, fully equipped with signs of every single type down here right now and eventually mangrove's gonna go with those four barrels the landscape is currently sticking out like a sore thumb so before i can mark this project as complete i need to add in some final touches first going over all of the dirt that we place and just adding in some grass and getting rid of the flowers here you can see the before and now after of how much of a difference this has made just by adding in a little bit of grass. From there, I thought it'd be cool to add in some tree stumps around here as if the lumberjacks from the mill are actually chopping things down. Promoting sustainability, I also want to plant a region of tree sapling. So naturally, as any other Minecraft player, we have to chop down a bunch of trees to get leaves to then be sustainable with our own custom trees. So now we pick up the spruce trees and we move them over here. One more little bit of detail we can add in here to our new trees is a bit of decoration to the ground. This can help to define it as being more of a man-made forest. And this adds the big time lore to the world. The tree lore, not that tree lore, little tree lore. And of course, some grass, but no flowers. Okay, maybe a few flowers along the way. They're so cute. And another dandelion patch over here because I can. We've built the most over the top possible storage room in here for all of our wood stuff moving forwards and have successfully cleared out one double chest that now has bricks in it and almost a barrel from the starter storage room. I think that's pretty good. I think that I think that's very good. One thing left to add in is I wanna show movement between this area. So we need a wagon right along here. I am happy to say my first storage room of this hardcore world is now complete. After surviving 1,430 days in the same world, I've now completed one of the most basic things you can do in a Minecraft world in my style. This is how I want to play Minecraft creating over the top beautiful structures that still have a little bit of function to them. Or maybe they just look nice. Recently, Minecraft 1.19 announced they would not be updating Birch Force. I was really sad at first, but then I realized I could use this opportunity to transform the Minecraft Birch Forest into my own Birch Forest update. So today I am happy to present my version of the Birch Forest update. Over 100 custom trees, 150 days played, with a biome extending more than 500 blocks across. Be sure to leave a like and please subscribe as it helps me out a ton, but let's get rocking. Before we can even start transforming this island, I need to clear out all of the acacia trees. This time I'm being smart and setting up the beacon. There we go. Now, I love acacia leaves, so we're actually going to gather all these up too. That was a lot more leaves than I thought it would be. We already have this old double chest basically full too. But on to chopping down all of the trees. 
Now that we've got a ton of leaves and logs to work with, we can get started on today's project. And at least I have a storage room to drop off all the acacia logs. And the leaves are just gonna go in here. Now that we've cleared out the land, I'm realizing just how flat this area is. So I'd like to bring in two small mounds, one right over here, as well as bringing this up over here. I don't think that much dirt's gonna do it. Flying over to the snowy plains biome, I do have my secret dirt gathering spot ready to go. dirt in the box and I am ready to start terraforming on this project. For this peninsula, I want to first create a lake out of the dip in the land, run a road through this entire area for future expansions, lastly including a huntsman cabin in the woods with a bunch of fun details in there. Starting with the lake area, as I want to dig up some more dirt, I worked with the existing terrain to smooth out the bottom of the lake with the dirt and dug out some more areas before bringing in a bunch of buckets of water to fill in the entire space. Right, there we have the base idea for the lake in place. With that I can get started by placing in some of the guidelines for the hills to make sure this shape is looking good. Second half of the dirt outlines are now in, and boy, do we have a lot of dirt placing to do. A little test here on the backside is done, and I like it. We'll eventually add in some rocks to clean up these steeper edges, but this should look really cool once we've got it going throughout the entire area. But first, I want to get the rest of the plans in over on this half. And there we have it. The entire rough idea is now down for the shapes of these hills. Time to place in a bunch of dirt and fill them in. Villagers aside, I'm starting to realize there's a big potential issue with this. Lots of mobs spawning under the terrain. Oh, look at all the drowned. Oh, he's looking at me. Nope, nope, nope. So before we do anything else too crazy, let's light up the dark spaces. This way it is an instant death when I eventually do fall through the floor. There we go. That should keep us a lot safer. Back to dirt placing. And here we have it. The entire first hill is complete. Nope, ignore it, ignore it. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. And there we have it. The entire first hill is now done. Yep. And the best worst part is I'm down to uh, just that much dirt left. Everything else is empty. This is a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. And there we are now completely out of dirt. Now I've been thinking before I cover up everything, I'm always needing more gravel. And there is so much in here. So I'm gonna spend a little while collecting up a good portion of it. And then we'll be back on the dirt grind. One sugar box completely filled. And all I took out was this small section. But for now, I need a ton more dirt and we have a decent amount in here, but that's not gonna cut it. Repairing the tools and back over to the dirt farm. And there we have it, four shulker boxes and some change. This should definitely be enough dirt. And you can barely tell we were here. UFO trees everywhere. Ooh. Well, it's time to get back to doing what I do best, placing a bunch of dirt blocks down and creating some hills. Placing in over 8,000 dirt blocks, you can see where we started from today. And now look at where we're already at and we haven't even started the forest. Taking some moss, I wanna add some highlights across the top of these hills. I am now realizing that I could have saved a bunch of time by doing this first, but it's fine. It, it's fine. I'm fine. It's all fine. It's fine. After mossyifying the landscape, I brought a bunch of coarse dirt in to create the road leading throughout the entire forest. A bunch of progress has been made on the landscape already. And next up, we need some trees to actually turn this into a forest. Wait, oh my gosh, I forgot something super important. I've got to plant a new field. I really love the flower field from the last episode. So we're doing remix round two. This time, alliums. Next up, I also need some more rooted dirt and we've got an azalea tree right here. I've already taken it. Already got that tree too. Please, please, please. No, oh, I didn't do all of it. Yes. No more rooted dirt in here, but that should be enough to get us through. Now this right here is gonna be our perfect spot. I gotta do it. It's tradition. Will you consider subscribing? If you've enjoyed the video so far, I think you'll enjoy the rest of my content too. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. 
And there we have it, our new Allium field. Side note, if you'd like this texture pack, consider becoming a member. I just released the new update. Moving back over to the trees, I've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes here as we have to chop down an entire birch forest in order to build our own custom birch forest. So for starters, I need to repair the hoe. It's about time to get a better experience farm. This is, this is slow, but it still does the trick, so it's fine. With that, the grind begins. Flying back home and I got a ton more lilies over here. And wow, I love flying underneath that bridge. Maybe that can be like the barrier. Everything inside of that bridge, we transform all of this. But that's for the future as right now we make a forest. From there, I jumped into my creative testing world and started designing some custom birch trees from scratch to see if I could come up with a few varieties I'd like to add into the forest. We've got the idea down for the types of trees that I want to include inside of here. But to make sure that they fit the scale inside this world, I want to build a few here to get ourselves started. Off with the tall skinny one. Attempt number two is in, and this does look pretty good for the edge of the forest. But when we get a little bit deeper in the forest, that's a different story. Now for the center of the forest, I want the base of the trees to be bare of leaves. So it looks more like a realistic forest as if everything is working towards getting as much sunlight in the canopy as possible. Looks a little weird right now, but I think once we get more trees in here and the underbrush, it's gonna blend in really well. And now we've got two tiny trees in here as well. But I'll tell you what, it's time to put two hours on the clock and see how many trees we can build. Each tree is currently taking me about 10 minutes to build, so hopefully I can work through this and speed up a touch or we'll be here for a very, very long time. This is really starting to look like a forest when you're walking around inside of it, but the ground is extremely boring, so it's time to fix that. I also added a few new trees, like these little ones we had along the river, and a little baby birch. And the most important, now last episode I had planned to make a flower farm. That didn't happen, but I do have a flower farm in a box. And a quick trip back over to World Spawn. The iron farm I recently found has been producing tons of bone meal, which means we can build ourselves a flower farm. Slowing down for a second here though, I know this is like probably 30%. We gotta finish covering that hill, get some trees along here, cover up these hills, but already I love this. One more interruption, I have to. When I was grabbing the box, I noticed the forest down there barely loading in in the Minecraft fog and that, I don't even know what to say. It just looks so good. Okay, back to regular scheduled programming. Today, I'm after the Azure Bluet flower. So we can just take this little spot here and build our own new farm. Looks like alliums are up here too. So I'm definitely gonna merge this way cause I, those are my favorite flowers. Any minute now and we can start harvesting the flowers if this turns into a grass block all right i can't wait any longer now we're done go 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 oh it's loud oh it's so loud we've got a ton of seeds but we've got even more alliums and azure bluettes this is this is good i dropped all the flowers off at the forest shulker monster and we're off to get the next resource warped roots and crimson roots for this we need a quick trip into the nether for some of the crimson nylium and the warped nylium now to get back home thought we could duck some farms right back here into the corner to make all these things this space in here should work out and it's a similar idea to the flower farm and the design we're using today is by exumavoy Loading it with bone meal and we should be good. Yes, there we go. 30 seconds later and we're already almost full. Oh, I'm gonna like this farm. I also have a ton of flowering azalea and regular azalea leaves. There, nearly everything in here is ready to go, but there's one more item that I wanna try using. For this, I'm gonna need a brand new tool, a diamond hoe, enchanting it, and we get ourselves unbreaking three. Not a bad start. Also gonna need mending, efficiency five, fortune three, and there we go. I wanna head over to the dark oak forest and see if we can get a load of dark oak saplings. Reason being, in order to grow a tree, you have to plant them like that. So if we put a single one, it's a decorative block. Now to see how many we can actually get. Ah, 
no. There we go. Three stacks of dark oak saplings. Now just to remove the stumps. Pretty good bonus of a ton of dark oak logs. Nearly 10 Minecraft days later, we're finally on to the last item, which I'm still regretting that I put inside here, but I need a load of glow lichen. But I lied on that being the last thing because there's one other element I want to add in. Lots of rocks. Poker of stone, cobblestone, tough blocks, and some moss. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I think I can get back to building. I thought it could be nice to create some larger boulders sitting here inside of the forest. Now that, that's a nice boulder. Uh, no, come on now. I was building my rock. A ton of boulders are already in place and it's looking a lot better inside. Now looking at the concept art for the wild update, they had a bunch of mushrooms on trees and I was thinking we could use some jungle slabs to kind of signify that. We also have bushes to add in and some plants along with the tiny trees. The last thing before grass is we find the big sunny spots and add in patches of flowers for the light coming through the canopy. We've also got glow lichen to add to the trees. I wanna add in some of our warped roots and lastly, we need a little bit of tall grass. And here we have a full example of what I hope this forest will look like and what I wish birch forests looked like in Minecraft. Now there's just one thing left to do, build trees over this entire peninsula. I've now spent an entire day IRL building trees for this forest. It's time to take a look at what we have so far. And this, this is looking fantastic. I recently cleared the excess chunks in my world to bring the 1.19 content closer to home and the game froze and it crashed. That's not good. Please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Okay, we are still alive. That's good. The game did not kill us. Oh my God, look what's loading in. One of the swamps turned into a mangrove swamp. <gasps> oh, this is so cool. I purposely avoided everything with the update, so I've never seen these in game before. Oh, we need to find a reason to build a bunch of mangrove trees. Mud, oh mud. Mud has been acquired. Next, we need some mangrove wood, as well as a bunch of the propagules. This should be enough to get us started between a few saplings and a bunch of logs. Now, where are the frogs? Or maybe just a tadpole. Anything? Anything. <gasps> Those are fish. Those, those are not frogs. Those are fish. You know what? You can come live in the lake. We'll find frogs later. Welcome home, my new fishy friends. From here, I decided to stream and work on this project, creating a custom lake bed out of mud, coarse dirt, rooted dirt, and then adding in a ton of sugarcane, bamboo, grass, carrots, wheat, and some bushes for all of the extra little details. Starting on the forager's cottage, I brought a pathway down to the plot of land before trying to build a house that is almost sunken or hidden in the side of the hill. Utilizing the new dried mud block and dried mud brick blocks to create an awesome earthy toned build, I also covered the top of the house with moss to really camouflage it inside of the forest. Amazing stream done, and now it's back to the grind, but check out this house for a forager who's gonna be living in the middle of the forest. Fully decorated out on the inside for a little tiny cramped home. Using mangrove wood and packed mud and mud bricks for the first time with a chest boat and a little dock. I love it. One final element to add in for this section is some bone meal at the bottom of the lake for the grass. Much, much better. And with that, the tree grind continues. I really started to find my rhythm with building all of these trees, but I want to make sure they all feel unique. Instead of just making cookie cutter trees all over the place and copying the same design each time, I want each tree to be able to stand on its own. So taking the time and care to put that into every single one. Adding in a little bit more detail along the edge of the pathway, we now have a full on forest that we can walk through. This really feels like an entire biome, but I gotta sleep away the scaries. With this, we've now completed over half of the trees needed for the entire forest. I really don't like the grass color we're getting over here being in the stony shore biome. So to better match everything else, I think we just spread moss across the entire area. But from here, so it isn't as daunting of a task. Good word, Fripp, good word. I'm gonna go back and add in all of the foliage underneath the trees for the forest that we built so far. Cause right now I have only done that section. A few hours spent going through the same process that we've already seen many, many times inside of this video. As the forest grows, 
so does the scale of everything we're doing. The forest expansion is now complete, going all the way around the back of the hill. Now we've just got to get back to building so many more trees. Okay, let's do it. I'm very sad. The biome coloring is making these not look that great. So it might mean it's just very heavy on the birch trees on this side, which it is a birch forest, so not bad. Small problem coming up here as I only have one stack of birch leaves left. Before we run back over to the birch forest and gather up a bunch more leaves, I do want to add in another building being a hunter's lodge. Something like this should work out. With a small workstation over here for some sort of a storage shed and include a dog kennel because we always need more good boys. Seeing as we're nearly in the home stretch, I'm going to also plan out where all the trees are going to go. And here I was thinking I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a lot of trees. Well, time to get more logs and leaves. There we go. The hoe is now repaired. Time to go chop a forest down. Plenty of leaves ready to go. And I even found a bee nest, which I think we can throw right up here. Now I've probably got an entire day or two of tree building ahead of me in order to finish this entire forest. So let's get started. This area is filling out really nicely on top of the hill. A bit annoyed by the biome coloring on the oak leaves, but all of this is new in here and we've got plenty more to go. I put down so many points to grow trees out of this. and I've been trying to fill in as many as I can. Mr. Wall. And it's so full in here. This side of the forest is probably twice as dense as our original, so I can save some time. And we can just remove a few of these. Right, that was about 15 trees removed. And it still looks really full. Ending the first day of building new trees by finishing off the outer perimeter on the east edge of the forest. And I can finally get a glimpse of what this is going to look like from the town. And it looks good my favorite part is from deep inside the forest right here you can barely see any way out of it all you know is you gotta follow the path to where more trees need to pop up but i've been thinking as a way to save myself some time they did need some timber to build up these new houses so a spot with a few tree stumps really can't hurt especially as we get more moss on log and a little guy growing back up loading up on blocks one final time for one final push building birch trees to finish off the canopy of this forest Replay mod decided to crash on me and I lost about three hours of time-lapse footage building new trees. So here's me sitting in a chest boat, all sad. So close. It's fine, fine, really. I just, I built some really good trees and it's, it's fine. It's fine. We've got to place the leaves on these final trees we got built up over here and a few more to build down that way. Let's hope this time-lapse works. Woo! Rome was not built in a day and neither was this birch forest. I have been at this for over a week IRL, but we're in the final stretch now. A few big birch trees still have to be finished up. Then I've got to make a few smaller ones as well, all before we can start the final stage of the ground foliage. I've been building up birch trees like crazy and we are finally on to the last, the last large birch tree I need to build in this entire area. The rest of the stumps are filled in. Here it is and he has nothing. Leads and leather. Time to throw some leaves on this tree. Birch trees are complete. I repeat, birch trees are complete. Next up, I need to finish off the little oak and acacia leaf trees. And now we're onto the final steps. Ground foliage coverage. Fancy way of saying flowers, which we can start with in patches, of course, with some variety. Next up, some small bushes to get some more height variety in here. Of course, the dark oak saplings and some azalea bushes. Finally, we make some bone meal and get some tall grass. 
With one item left on the bucket list, building the hunting lodge, it's time to first take a second to look at what we've built so far. Well, finishing off the forest, I had left some copper out to age, which looks like it's pretty ready to be collected. Except these two, they didn't age at all. Moving on, starting off with this build, we're gonna wanna use some spruce logs on the front and oak going around the back. Throw in some stripped oak logs in, some spruce slabs arching up to the top and working all the way around with some stairs, then some aged copper along the back, which we can detail with the old ax and wax. So more details added in, and there we go. The Doge Kennels. Time to get some puppy dogs. And we've got ourselves a doghouse right over here. Guy and Geo can stay up top. No, Geo, stay here. Straight. And the other two can come with me. Now, I know I showed you all this earlier in today's episode, but look at the view from the starter base. Looking down the valley just makes me so happy right now. One build down, but I do need some names for these puppy dogs, so let me know down in the comments. Next up, I'd like to tackle a small storage shed right over here. That's all ready to go, so now it's time for the lodge itself. Now, I really love walking in and out of this area. It is looking absolutely fantastic. I've got to clean up the shulker mess, but there's one more element I would like to add in. A bit of a grand entrance, showing that we're moving to a new zone. And of course, we've got to throw some of the mangrove in all the way along the top. Gonna really liken this on top and a lamp to light our way in. There we go. The Hunter's Lodge is now complete. One last question remains. Is this Birch Forest Gemini Tay approved? Gem, I've called you here for a very specific reason. First, I see you got a totem and try and stay alive, so wear some shoes. Got it, shoes. I built a uh -huh. birch forest. I need to know if it's Gemini Tay approved. Okay, let's check it out. It's looking pretty impressive from this angle. You know what, I'll, leave, I'll let you go first. Right ahead, okay. through the gateway. Okay. Ooh, okay, look at the details. It's, it mm -hmm. smells like a birch forest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very, very bright, very birchy. This this is good. You got the lichen, the diorite, all the good blocks. Good blocks, good blocks, okay, okay. I think, Flip, this is Gemini Tay approved. Gemini Tay approved, awesome, great. Perfect. Fantastic. There we have it. Starting from a blank slate of land, I created an entire custom biome in this single video, so be sure to leave a like and please subscribe. I built over 100 unique custom trees and landscaped the entire region, all to create my vision of what Birch Forest should look like inside of Minecraft. Today, I aim to expand the lore behind this world by constructing a brand new castle using the new Minecraft 1.19 blocks and spending over six hours building building a new farm that doesn't even work. But my goal is to tell a story that anyone can understand simply by walking around this Minecraft world. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new for the lore. Since 1.19 was announced, I've been obsessed with the mud bricks and I've already used them in the house over here, but I need more of them in my life. Recently, I saw a castle by History Builds and I got super inspired to make my own mini castle. And I thought this would be a great excuse to try out the new mud brick blocks. Shulkers are ready to go and I wanna get everything I can out of the mangrove swamp because I'm sure I'll figure out a way to use it later on. We're starting by clearing out all of the mangrove leaves and all of the trees so we can get to the precious mud blocks. Clearing a mangrove swamp is absolute pain. That was 30 minutes to get from here to there. But now with the trees cleared, it's time to move on to gathering up all of the beautiful mud. At least there's a good amount of mud once you start digging down in here because this, and there's more right there, was already an entire shulker box and some change. Next up, while we're out here, I really want to find some frogs. I just slept and there he is. Look at him. Oh, there's a second one. Come with me. You're mine now. We have two frogs. Look at that little waddle. Look at how cute they are. Did one last loop around and couldn't find any more, so we're just bringing these two home. <gasps> no, no, don't, 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 don't die on the cactus.
practice. I'm getting you two home as quickly as I can. Almost back home, but I gotta deal with some mobs real quick and clear out this section of the land to connect the Froggy Express all the way back home. And here we go. Now our base is officially connected to the ocean. So we're completely connected to the Guardian Farm. See, pathways everywhere. The perfect spot for the frogs to be able to hang out is going to be in the little lake we built in the last episode. Leave them to hang in the boat for now. Now for a very important step, we're grabbing some slime balls and I need to know what color frog do we get spawning in here? Have a slime ball and have a slime ball and baby froggy. Oh, we get tadpoles. <gasps> Oh, we got the advancement again. Nice. They haven't done anything. Did you guys do something? How do we make the baby frog? Oh my God, they did it. Ah, frog spawn. Wait, that's so cool. Frog land has begun. So I'm thinking about putting the new castle somewhere over here to protect the existing land we built on and any threats coming down the river that we just went through. Now, first I've got to clear a bunch of trees out of this area. And I did want to take a quick moment to chat. I build a lot of big things in this world and I really love doing that in Minecraft. I'll be honest, originally today I had planned on creating an entire nether hub, like a really, really big one. But then I thought about it and realized that not everything I do inside this world needs to be mega or massive. Don't get me wrong. I love the mega projects. I really do. But sometimes the most fun way to play Minecraft for me is just to pick something that I can build and really enjoy the process of and have a lot of fun with learning and building up new details. So today is going to be about that. A really awesome build and going through the process of just enjoying creating something in my Minecraft world. How he managed to get stuck in the boat again, I don't know. But look over here. We have tadpoles. Ah, oh, they're so cute. Now with some stone, I want to plan out the shape for the castle so I can know a little bit more about what we're working with here. First, starting with a big circle tower that's going to overlook the water. Next, I want to build a wing off of this. But to keep this small, I want to throw in a big tower here on the corner as an end piece. Looking pretty good so far. Now we expand along this edge. Going back to the inspiration image I'm using, I think we can also raise the terrain up here a bit, but I really like the shape of this so far. Thankfully, we've got a good amount of dirt left over from last episode, and there should be a box out here too. Yeah, there we go. So I'm thinking we just bring the dirt up about this tall and merge it back into the terrain. With the first side completed, I started to fill in the remaining sections around the north side of the castle as well. I'm not quite sure what I want to do on the water side, as I've got something fun in mind for going across the river here, so we'll just leave it for now. Moving on to the next project, as I need a lot of wheat to convert mud into packed mud. So it's time for an auto wheat farm. And to get started on this, I need some allays to use to automatically gather the wheat, which we can only find at a pillager outpost. So grabbing some leads and we got plenty or maybe a woodland mansion, but it's time to explore. Oh, whoa, hey, first pillager outpost. Right, let's see what we got down here. Any allays? Yes. Yes, don't want to let them out. So we're going to go on the side and I'm going to give them sand. Here you go, buddy. Take the sand, take the sand. Everybody follow me. Let's get out of here. We definitely need more than two and it's not 119.1 yet. So we can't duplicate them. And we definitely want to leave the pillagers behind. Now the true question, can we fly? No, no, we cannot. No, we definitely cannot fly. Oh, this is going to be a long journey. Here we have pillager outpost number two. Oh, we have three. There's three. There's three. There's three. There's three. And a golem. Oh, I need to clear that for you. There you go. Now, now you can go kill them. Take some sand. Take some sand. Follow me. But we do have one, two, three, four, five, six. We might have lost one in the fray. Right. We made it to the ocean. We're in the home stretch now. And that wandering trader over there had small drip leaf. Oh, today's a good day. This has taken far longer than I care to admit, but having the base completely connected to the ocean via the waterways is amazing. All seven LA's home safe and sound. I fell in a hole. Safe and sound. For easy access to the villager trading hall in the mountain via the railroad, I think I can put the farm in the side right about here. Now, I really hate doing this, but I can't figure out a way to make this farm look nice. So I'm gonna be hiding the entire thing underground which means it's time to do some digging. <laughs> 30 blocks down is a lot farther than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, that pickaxe is very dead. And we are out. Got my pickaxe fully repaired now. I needed a few redstone resources. I already had a handful of observers. I needed tons of hoppers, as well as pistons to craft sticky pistons. Finally, I also have a use for all of this leftover glass. Lastly, needing composters for the farmers. Items have been acquired. Now we can begin the farm. Hmm. 
First layer of the farm is now done, minus a little bit of deep sight. Now we just need to stack this up five more times and plant in all the fields. Second layer is now done. Third layer is done. Just three more to go. There we have it. The easy part is done. Now for a quick way to turn it on and off. Because, ow, this hurts to listen to. And it's off. Oh, peace and quiet. As next, I need to get one villager and one allay in every single one of these boxes. First up, villagers, as I'm way more worried about the allays escaping. Rerouting the iron farm rail. I think I can just go straight this way. Here we should connect into the farm right there. Perfect. Starting from the top, going down to the bottom. Let's hope this works. First villager is a go. I've just got to meet him over on the far side. Any minute now, he's going to be coming all the way down here. I've lost my villager, buddy. Or I just wasn't patient enough, but there he is. Well, come on in, buddy. There you go. I'll get some wheat seeds for you soon. Don't worry. Here we have all five villagers ready to be added. Come on in this way. Let's get everybody inside. You, sir, need to go to the bottom. Oh, that's going to hurt him every time. Four more flights. You're okay, right? Last one? Ah, I told you you could do it. Good job, buddy. The villagers are all in place, and now I need so many seeds. Not only do I have to fill in all of the farmland with wheat seeds, I also need to fill the inventory of the farmer. Nope, back up, stop, so that he can't pick up any of the wheat. Second villager is done, but I'm already almost out of seeds. Thankfully, when building the birch forest last episode, I created a flower farm in the flower forest. And these things are great. Gotta hit this side. Great for making seeds. So I just gotta sit here and burst my eardrums. Here we have a ton of new flowers to work with later and all of these seeds. Right, that was only enough seeds to actually do two more of them. And I've got another two left to go. One more round. Seeds. Get your stupid carrots out of here. We don't like carrots here. We only want wheat. We only want wheat in these fields. And fill up the inventory. Please take the seeds. I think we're good. Time to get the allays in. Now for the most difficult task out of all of these things. I would like that sand back and have some wheat. No, he took my totem. No, 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 no. Okay, we've got one. Let's go. Come on, buddy. No, up here. You got to leave your friends. You'll see them again. They're coming too. I promise. Come on, just walk with me. Oh, this is going to take a long time. We got one inside. Yes. And now if I just unlead you, you are ready to go. Now, how do I get out without letting you out? Stand there, please. Okay, first one's done. Five more to go. Second one is now in if he wants to walk in here yes and we out third delay is now in and disconnected fourth one is now in and locked last two to go brought the last two together and number five is in and the last one look at the wheat there's wheat on the ground don't you want to pick it up oh he's finally inside the brain hurting thumping has begun which means the farm is active and it's quiet up here oh thank you i changed up the sound so it doesn't sound quite as terrible but i want to get out of here so let's take some stone and we're headed over to the castle to plan things out a little further starting for the gate we can go one two Two, three bring it up one and over which will give us a walkway right about here and then the corners i'd like to give a few more blocks of height there's the gatehouse planned out very roughly i'm gonna do the big tower last as i want it to really stand out so we've got to get everything else planned in so we can start with a pretty simple roof on this one then the stair tower is gonna come up just outside of it but we can connect the top for now yes that's good it's odd Then this guy's probably gonna come up to about here and the roof will extend up even further on the inside maybe we go like two or three blocks taller just so it's not a carbon copy don't worry i hopefully won't die building the castle this time I'd like to keep all the roofs about the same height. So maybe this guy starts right about here, but he's a weird angled build and I'm not even at the corner. That's the corner. And I'm really hoping this meets up in the center, but it does not. I've sorted out this weird diagonal structure and I think I got something that's going to work in here. It'll be a little wonky until we get the roof in, but that should be good. And everything's about the same height, but there's still a touch of variety. 
Now for the big boy. I think we raise it up to about here. So it's taller than every other tower. And then we can put the topper on it, which from down here looks like we've got a lot of blocks to place in after we plan out these back sections where the circular tower is going to come just above the roof line for the other guys quick look back from the water and that is going to look really cool once we get everything in here oh i'm getting excited in the meantime have we gotten any hay i need to turn it off even being in this room no thank you one we have one one hay i don't think it works when we're all the way over at the castle that's very disappointing okay new plan as we need a ton of hay to be able to do this thing let's work on creating the road going over there hopefully that should fill up step one is going to be chopping a load of trees so we can actually see where we need to send a pathway through which is pretty surreal as these are the oak leaves of the first tree i chopped in this world only 1639 days later With the pathway cleared, I started to work on building the road from spawn all the way out to the castle. Using the typical road pattern for this region with coarse dirt and some spruce slabs to smooth out the height transition, making this actually into something that's walkable. And the road is now finished. And so is the courtyard. There's just no walls to make it an actual courtyard. We should probably deal with that. With the road completed, it's time to work on actually building up the castle. I don't typically show this side of building, but here in a creative testing world, you can see the base plan in mind for the castle. Slowly adding in all of the details for the castle and reworking a bunch of it. I tested out the texturing here on the front and I think it's going to work out. Time to do this all over again in hardcore survival. Oh no, my castle, it's broken. But we're back in the hardcore world after over six hours spent planning, and it's time to get some blocks together. From here, I got to work gathering up everything I could get my hands on, raiding most of my storage room for different types of blocks from deep slate to calcite to diorite, mangrove wood, copper, spruce, dark oak, and a ton of bricks. Jumping down into the villager trading hall as well, I traded for a ton of dripstone blocks to blend in with our packed mud. Starting to lay out the massive shulker monster. No! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, at least we didn't lose any boxes. And now see why I need a castle defense system. Well, that's everything I have so far. And I'm a little worried here that I don't have enough mud. But I've got to convert it and we can at least get started on the castle. All right, wheat farm, have we produced anything? Besides being very mind-numbing. Three three wheat we've got three wheat so far that's that's not gonna work pains me to do this but i will dive into the decorative hay bale count because with this we can definitely convert it all did i really waste four hours building up that wheat farm and it doesn't work at all uh, any ideas on how i can fix it but for now we just make all of the packed mud we need and that will have to get us started i think it's time to tackle the front gatehouse With the gatehouse in, that's all I really had planned to do for the texturing. So I'll make up the rest as I go. But next up, I'd like to tackle the small stair towers. First, I'd like to start by thickening up the base a touch more. That should work out. Now we just go up with some white blocks. Starting off, I should convert some of the concrete powder into concrete, which we can do right over here. Now from here, we can start up building on top of this tower and send ourselves all the way up. First tower is done, and I think I like it. I'm purposely not filling in the back, so it might be not the most stable, but it's Minecraft stable. Next up, I think we just get the second one in right over there because it's basically the same thing. The twin towers are now risen, and while the hobbits are on their way to Isengard, we should probably get a little bit more work done out here. I started the base of this one, and oh my lord, the inventory problem in Minecraft is so real. There's too many beautiful blocks I want to use, and I can't fit them all in my inventory. Begin which, I think we work on this front face here because we've got a big old grand window. If I can find my glass anywhere in this mess. Ah, there it was. A great way for the castle that we can add a lot of detail in super easily is just by adding a little bit of depth around the build, like some 
some decoration on the front of a window. Trying to really define the shape of this thing. Something like this. Balance it out with some deep slate. And then we come around the back here and just border the whole thing with calcite. Bringing in some glass panes. We now have window, which looks so much better than just a flat thing. Now, let me get a roof on it. Well, building up this castle wing, I have a question for you all. Do you enjoy the time lapses or do you prefer the montages and stutter cuts in game? I want to show me playing the game. So I like a balance of all three, but I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments on what I should favor the most. Before I can throw the roof on the first wing, we've got a little bit more work to do on this wall back here. And I thought it could be interesting to give ourselves a walkway sticking out the side. This way we can have a little bit more height variety inside of the courtyard without doing any like crazy terrain work. I've already done a staircase over there too. But instead of stone on this side, what if we try something a little different here and use some wood? I think I can do this trap door there and then I won't hit my head. Yeah, we can make it up. Around this, however, I'm thinking we do throw in some mangrove trap doors because I just love the color. And a little guard for the walkway so we don't fall. I like it. Now I just need a wall going all the way up. And also to add to this, I've fallen in love with this window design recently. So we do some light gray glass, stack that up and ladders in the front. Then from here, we add a little decorative shutter and another window right over here. One final element on this side is we need to get the mud brick stairs going all the way across. And now to finally put a roof on part of the castle. For a simple roof topper, we can take some chains and some polished walls, and that should come all the way across. Perfect. And then little boys on top of them. After that, I also want to bring in quite a few of our little chimneys using salt fire campfire so they don't glow all that much, but we still get the smoke. And there we go. The first building is done four more to go the big old tower is looking a little sad from the front being half completed so let's toggle that next With all of the walls in place, I can now start adding in a lot of the details a ton more easily, like the machicolations here on the battlements. With that in place, I thought the wall over here looked pretty flat, so we can have a wooden jut out as a way for people to defend against any ships that might be coming along the water. Putting in some temporary blocks where then I can come on the outside and add in a ton of spruce trap doors. This way we can maximize the amount of standing space in the middle while still getting a cool little bit of detail. I really want to put mangrove accents more in this build, so so we're just gonna add some in here because I can. And now that is starting to look a lot better down here. Let's get the roof on this guy. Oh, I completely forgot the middle. Maybe that's a good thing. I got an idea I wanna test. First in here, we can start by raising this up a touch so that we're not just walking in off of the dirt floor. Then we can have some fun by bringing in some lighter tones, being our birch and sandstone bits. This way we can create a small door down here. Well, maybe a little bit of a bigger door with the mangrove door right in the center. I'm just always running out of them. Door, lever, lever, lever. Button, 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 button. I don't think I can go any higher than that. Ah, nope, nope, can't even try it. Not even worth a try. With that in place, it's time to finally put the roof on this. And I think while we're at it, we grab this guy too. Another time lapse, Wee! Okay, let's go. With the roofs done, we can start working on some of the larger towers so we can really fill this place in. But they're rather flat for now, so balcony time. And of course, we do need a door back here. With our mangrove and darko. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, one more back here. And the second one is now in as well. Looking pretty good. We just really need a top on these two towers. Let's do the big guy first. I'm more excited about that one. First on the big tower, I want to pop it out a touch so that we get a little bit more depth up here. This is all secretly because I want to make a really fun looking roof. I don't know why I have to keep that a secret, but here we are. Now extending the trim out even further, I'd like to bring in some mangrove trap doors as well as some slabs. And now we can start the actual tower. For the top, we can bring in a bunch of diorite, our concrete colors, and a little bit of the calcite. Toss a window in, a ladder down here because we can, and some spruce trap doors for a little window shutter. Carrying this around to all the different sides, adding in little details wherever I can fit them. That should look pretty good once we get a roof on top. With the top of the tower walls complete, I got to work creating an entire roof out of copper to make this pop even more against the rest of the castle. 
also building a small flag on top of the tower to give it some more flair. I ran out of oxidized copper, so I have to wait for the top to age a bit further, but at least I can fix up the bottom for now and add in some of the honeycomb. I meant to age it a lot further, but I'll be honest, I actually really like that especially with the flag on top so far i've spent nearly 10 hours today building this castle and my elytra is hurting so before i hurt as well i've got to go repair it well elytra's now repaired back to the castle from there i've been working on the roof of this back tower and so far it's pretty boring so i open up the top again and i think instead of the deep slate just going straight up we could instead break it up a touch using some diorite and calcite going all the way across and create some archways add in some iron bars then mangrove of trapdoors along the base i like it yeah let's do it on all sides with that done we can do the same pattern down here of the dark oak trim which is double slabs going all the way around now i just need to throw the top with the deep slate on again and the exterior of the castle will be complete adding one more flag on top of the tower we can finally call the exterior of the main castle completed now i say the main castle because we still have that river gateway i mentioned earlier so for this we've got to get rid of the drown and overtake the river then from here i'd like to start stacking up a bunch of tough blocks so we can create a support base topping that with some andesite then we pull out cobble stone and stone bricks and we can just kind of start adding these in as we work our way up picking out the water a little ways and we can put a tiny two by two topper on the thing i also like to build another one of those over here excuse me the river's closed right now the same slabs and stacking the cobblestoney bits all the way up right like this there we go second tower is now done too from here we grab some jungle fences and start to connect them all the way down to the different towers i just created in between the towers i want this to come all the way down and touching the water on the corners we can also add in a few of these guys to make it look like the whole thing is floating now over here i want to bring it back up and do a tiny version of that tower With one last element to add into our new little outpost, I wanted to create a dock down here along the edge of the water with a lantern so the drowns don't get us. But look at this. We've got a little pathway leading all the way up to our brand new structure. I tried taking the color palette from the main castle, which looks so good, and turned it into this tiny boy. And I really like it. One final step here is going to be attaching this to the edge right over here. The castle is completed and oof, I'm happy to be saying that. But now to decorate the bits of land outside of it to bring it more into the environment, maybe get rid of that. Starting with the riverbank by clearing away the grass, adding in some rooted dirt and adding in some coarse dirt. After that, I wanna add in some mangrove roots to be a bit of like a thicket of sticks or things. Gotta get some flowers in too. Sugarcane, some bamboo and a few dark oak saplings to be small plants and some mangrove leaves of well which i always forget we can now waterlog these so that's really cool to get a little variety in crops though i grab the hoe and we can just plant a few potatoes around today i learned if you hoe rooted dirt you get a hanging root there's only one thing left to do cleaning up this absolute mess of shulker boxes and that that's a lot of items we have left over but the castle is looking so good spending over 100 days in minecraft building a brand new castle and i am so excited about the result of this one using mud bricks for the first time on a big build and i absolutely love it today is the hardcore episode where i build tons of farms before attempting the largest project ever inside this world my end goal is to transform the entire end dimension get it <laughs> end goal but first i need a bunch of blocks to build with so i got a little sidetracked today and built an entire nether hub as well as every single one of the nether farms apparently this is how i get ready for a massive project by doing a completely different project but partially related massive project and spending hundreds of hours working on it so leave a like and subscribe yeah that's the intro sorted the first farm i want to build today is a slime farm which thankfully is very easy now in minecraft 1.19 i just need a lot of brown mushrooms well i should say i need a little over nine stacks of brown mushrooms hopefully we can find some here on the nether roof with the brown mushrooms sorted next up i need 11 stacks of building blocks and tough should do two stacks of tinted glass and so close but a quick trip to the geodes Blah! nailed it and we can craft some more perfect 
Next up, I need 25 buckets of powdered snow. Thankfully, we can get right here. There we go. And this should do it for everything we need to build the farm. Now just to get to the swamp to actually make it. I don't have the blocks to build another golem, so I'm just gonna start adding in the mushrooms where I can. Wow, that was the perfect number of brown mushrooms. Oh, that's lucky. The final step is to create an AFK platform in the sky. For this, I wanna take a play out of my friend Mythical Sausage's book and create a hot air balloon to AFK inside of safely, which is looking pretty good. Now I can sit here and see if we actually get any slime. Let's hope it works. One item I really, really want to use for the end project is frog lights. I should have some frogs down here in the birch forest, which we can breed using the new slime balls I just got. I've been waiting the entire day. They've done nothing. Oh, uh, yes, there we go, finally. And now I wait 10 minutes. Oh, we got tadpoles. Ah, uh, there they are. Great. Now I just need a bunch of these and to grow them all in the different biomes. My goal is to get eight frogs of each color. First, the cold frogs we can get up here in the mountain after they grow. Oh, we got our first frog. Oh, I love them. The green ones are so cute. And here we have eight of our green frogs, one of the three down. The orangey brown frogs are now ready to go as well. Oh, look at them. They're so happy. Right, one more set to go. Nope, back through the portal back through the portal. I want to do it later, but so we don't lose any more frogs, we'll break this portal. The new portal should be going right here. In you go, boys. In you go. Frogs has all been transferred to the roof. And now for the final type of frog. 30 minutes later, and we've done it. Eight of each type of frog. For a future nether hub, I want to use this lava lake and open a way through the ceiling all the way up there. So I can have an easier way to get onto the roof than this little hole. Which coordinates wise lines up to these torches here. Perfectly centered on the gas farm. Now if I did my math correctly and we go directly this way, we hit basalt delta. Meaning we can build the frog light farm and magma cube farms out here. Running back to the base, I craft up everything I needed to start building. This farm by Shulkercraft uses pretty basic mechanics, but it's just a lot of blocks. And everything fits into these two boxes. Right into assembling the farm to collect frog lights. The collection system is created for me to store the byproduct of frogs eating magma cubes and somehow pooping out a different colored cube. Oh, everybody get in line, please, children. An orderly fashion to the frog apocalypse. Look at them. Slowly but froggle into the pit of snack time. I would like all these leads back, please. Thank you. And up we go. Looks like the farm is working from up here. We can get rid of the scaffolding and we should see a few frog lights coming in. How did you get down here? And there we have it, our first Frog lights. Oh, that's amazing. Time to give this a little bit of while to work and we'll have plenty. With the frog light farm finished up, I AFK'd for a while to gather up a good supply. But that's enough techie stuff for a bit. It's time to build pretty things. Like breaking a giant hole inside of the bedrock ceiling. Am I going a little too big on this one? I don't know. We'll find out. It's a circle. All right, time to get some stuff together. To do this, I'm going to need hundreds of TNT blocks, lots of pistons, and finally levers and trap doors. To make sure this is an absolute pain, I put on blast protection boots, blast protection pants, and we're gonna throw on the chest piece. Assembling the bedrock breaking machine, grabbing the piston, we flip the lever, we go down, and we spam click right here. Uh, I don't think that worked. It worked. Oh, it worked. Now I just got to do it this entire circle. Okay, let's keep going. New more dangerous design. Let's see if this one wants to work for us. Please. Yes, two blocks down. First few lines are in and I am wasting so much food. So I think I just set up a regen beacon. About 40% of the way around the circle and wow, my armor is toasted. All right, there we go, all fixed up. The first circle in the bedrock ceiling is now dug out and we've got a few access points all the way down, which means we're done, right? I don't have to spend three more hours breaking all this. Yeah, okay, I, I, get, I guess we just keep going. Four hours later and we got four blocks left on the top layer. I found it's easier if you surround the thing completely with obsidian and don't fall in the hole. 
And there we go. The entire top layer is done. Repairing all the armor one more time. Crafting up some more rockets because I am very out. And more TNT. Instead of clearing layer by layer, I started shifting to clearing all the way through in order to have some hope of seeing the bottom and being able to break into the netherrack. We're a little over halfway done now, about seven hours into this project. Resources are starting to run thin, but at least the end is in sight. And there goes the last one just to clean up all this mess. With the circle cleared out, I wanna use the remaining TNT that I have to blast a hole all the way down to the lava lake below. And finally, this should give us a very easy way to fly in and out of the nether. There it goes. Now we can be safe on top of the nether and anytime we need to get anything, we can fly on down. With the big circle through the bedrock roof, next up, we need to build something here. Because right now it looks cool, but it doesn't look that great. First up to raid all of the pearlescent frog lights, this will hopefully be enough. I've been stocking up resources in my base for far too long. So it feels nice to finally be able to empty some of these shulker boxes. But no matter how many blocks I have, there's always something else I still need. First, amethyst clusters. Then a load of packed ice, which I can craft into blue ice. Lastly, I need light blue dye to make light blue glass. So a quick flower farm in the swamp should do the trick. Some of this blocks don't work, but there we go. Crafting up the light blue glass and we'll be all ready. I'm really liking this, but outside of it, things are a little bland right now. So I've got something I wanna try. We bring the frog lights all the way down and create a floor here out of the light blue concrete powder. Now again, on the outside, I wanna bring in even more frog lights. And from here, we can create a foggy glass effect with our blue glass. The foggy glass effect is now in and we got some more substance going around here. Next, I've got these little pockets on the side and we need to mob proof everything. So prismarine first and amethyst clusters on top. This is looking really good now but there's a few things we can still do like making this into something functional by having some offshoots going every direction so we can create some ice boat roads bordering on all of the end stone bricks that we've been using to help brighten up the nether and this right here is exactly why it all needs to be mob proof but first i'm obsessed with frog lights and if you got a problem with that hop on out of here get it it's a frog pun Please don't leave. From here, we can run a blue ice track all the way down the middle, cover all of the frog lights with even more glass and a nice crystal border. To keep the road safe, we need slabs along the edge and walls to keep the boat going straight because that's really difficult. And with that, I got to repeating the same pattern over to the other three sides of our nether hub thingy of sorts. To add some green into the nether, I wanna add a bunch of mossy carpets around the base. And there we go, the entire green strip, which I'm actually really enjoying. But I brought some things I might be able to use as a border, maybe something like this. Now it feels a little bit more like a garden. The Pokeball is looking really good, but it's a little flat. And before I extend the ice boat roads all the way out to their farms, a very, very long distance, magic floating crystals should be able to help. Just a bunch of colors. Bunch of colors of glass here are ready to go. But first, let's grab some sandstone, where we can build some big pillars stretching high into the sky. The archways are now all in place and time to put some crystals between them. And now the rest of the crystals are in as well. Flying down from the nether and up to the roof. That looks really cool. Remember, today we started with this and now we're here. But before finishing off the ice boat roads, I need farms built up to connect them to. Down the yellow crystal road, I want to create a gold farm in the nether waste biome. Using the magma cube farm, I'm able to craft up all of the magma blocks I'm going to need. I want to make a portal based gold farm so it's really efficient here. So we need to go to the end and get obsidian. In my grand end entrance, we're like every good YouTuber, I'm definitely recording this in order. So we can start taking down one of the obsidian pillars. And off we go. Intense obsidian mining time lapse. So quick. Wow, so much breaking of blocks. So cool. Oh my gosh, this took me 30 minutes. Why am I doing this? With that, the last annoying item I'm going to need is some turtle eggs. Hello, my friends. Now we can all just get off the beach and I can pick up the eggs, please. 
there we go 17 turtle diamonds items are all together finally it's time to have some gold to work with in this hardcore world Adding in the turtle eggs and trapdoors to the middle so the pigs can't stop them, it's time to grab some magma blocks and get to work on building all of the platforms. So simply placing in the magma blocks for this farm took a total of seven hours. Shulkercraft, you better be right about this being a mega gold farm. For the final step in the nether, we need to add glass all the way across the top to stop the gas. I should probably get rid of all these piglins before we release them into the overworld. Next, we go to the overworld to build the killing chamber. Uh, I wish we were above ground. I guess I'll just have to move it up myself. Of course, we pop up in the middle of a river, but this should now be fixed. And perfect. Now to hook up the main one. This here should be the spot, so we can throw the nether portal up here. After the portal was up, I assembled the entire collection system in the overworld using a glass box to contain the piglin army. And now, back on the nether roof, I need to light all of these portals and the farm is ready to go. Hopefully the flint and steel last long enough. Ah, oh, we were so close. Oh, oh, that's, that's death down there. All done and the gold farm should be finished as well. As you can see here, this is working very well. But now for the most important thing in any hardcore Minecraft episode, planting a field. Sure, we may have massive amounts of gold now, but I still need more wheat to sustain my packed mud obsession. But now for my other obsession. Have you subscribed? You may watch the videos on my channel all the time, but not realize you're not subscribed. So be sure to double check so you don't miss out on any videos. Now that that's fixed up here, I can live out my happy days. Oh, I have to go back to the nether. I have another farm to build? Oh, okay, fine. Down the Orange Crystal Express, we have a crimson forest, which is porkingly perfect for a hoglin farm. With our spawning platform in place, we can light all of this stuff on fire and get out quick. Oh, that hurts. I cannot wait to watch the terrified hoglins burning in the fire for all of the pain they have caused me. I'm not the bad guy, right? I'm just scaring them and they're tripping. Piglins are friend, not food, so we wanna make sure they're not spawning out here. The hoglins are food. Hooking up a storage system here in this hoglin farm by Logical Geek Boy is pretty much done. As always, the last thing, we just need an AFK platform. Things are starting to look pretty crazy up here. There's a lot of technical stuff going on. But look at them, look at them burn. You get what you deserve. I don't like hoglins, okay? But I do like pork chops and leather. With the hoglin farm done, there's only one thing left to do. A piglin bartering system, as I really need those blocks for future builds. And I thought the perfect spot could be another circle around our central point. Now we already have a bartering farm down here, but as you can see, my evil nemesis, the hoglin, is still here. So I think we take the same design and move it up there. Spanning on the current setup, I went around and created an entire new circle on the outer edge to support the bartering station. Oh no, even the baby piggies. Oh no, even the baby piggies. For another element on this build, I'm thinking we can throw in a bunch of gold blocks. Wow, this farm's already full. This way we can show off that it's for piglin trading and taunt the pigs a little bit. Now that I've got a few gold blocks to my name, we can throw some in the walls. Next, I need a load of glass to cover all the frog lights, and I never thought I'd see the day. This is the last of the sand I have from the ocean monument. With all the blue glass I got, I'd like to cover up the frog lights just to darken it a touch. Now for the easy part of this process, I need to build up all of the locations where we're gonna be housing the piglins, which we wanna make sure they're right at home so we can use some gold accents. I've gotta leave the tops off for now though, cause we do need to get piglins in here, but we can at least get this section in here with a frog light and a little bit more endstone. I just need to repeat this 11 more times around the entire circle. With the chest place in, it was easy to follow the design around the hub, making sure to leave space for the piglins to fall into their new forever homes as we're adopting these poor little creatures to force feed them gold. And whoa, this is getting a little too real here. Uh, let's move on. To next up, we need to take a whole load of emeralds here and get ourselves 32 name tags. There we go. Now for the super fun circus of getting the piglins in. 
First off, we need to create some pathways all the way down here. Temporary netherrack right there. And a trapdoor right like that. So I can get through and then the piggies stop. We got the crimson forest biome over here. So if we just create a big spawning platform, this should hopefully do it. And if we fly all the way up here. Oh, we got a first one and it's got a crossbow. We don't want that. And I gotta take out the babies. Oh, here we go. Now we got it. Oh, we got our first sword. Up here, buddy. Up here. All the way. You can have that. A name and you are in. Number one. 31 to go. Oh, there's so many of them. There's so many pigs. And there we're halfway. There's so many pigs here. I just want the piglins. There is one keeper in all of that. And they're in. 32 piglins in place. Next, I gotta move some glass in. The final piglins are now sealed in. There's definitely better systems for this, but I can currently go around, drop in a bunch of gold in each, click the button, and we're trading. Put nine stacks of gold ingots in half of them because I definitely don't have enough gold to do the other half. But check this out. The center of the nether hub is now completed and we're already getting plenty of goodies. If you have any ideas on how I can clean up the backside here with the chest, let me know. And next up, I need to extend the ice boat roads all the way down to the new farms. That's a very, very long highway. Just got to go all the way back. With the mud in place, I added in the entire length of endstone bricks, prismarine slabs, amethyst, frog lights, and glass. Holy cow, this is a really, really really long ice boat highway. I'm really glad I just took a moment to test this before I built the entire blue ice way because watch this. That's not very quick. This doesn't work at all. I modified the design to the Hoglin highway and now we zoom. Meaning I need to raise the blue ice up by a block and I'm thinking we throw in the Ocri frog lights below. Walls are now in place as well. On top of raising this up, next thing I need to get is another five stacks of blue ice. I've got a frozen ocean pretty close to my base so I should be able to get everything here. We've got ourselves 10 stacks and a little bit more of blue ice. Pickaxe is repaired and time to place it all over the blue ice. Here we have the first ice boat highway is now completed. And that is really quick. <laughs> oh, straight it out and we're off and we're back. The sugar monster is forever growing, but I've completed the Hogland Highway and the Gast Express. The only one left is the gold tunnel. Thankfully, this one is about a hundred blocks shorter than the magma one. The functional part of the ice boat road is now in. Time to just make it look pretty. Starting with the mud going all the way down. Next up, throwing the amethyst on top. It's probably smart to spawn proof this right now. Adding in some frog lights for the light rail then adding our glass right on top and stone has been placed in and the final nether highway is now completed to every single mega farm we could need in the nether over 70 hours spent building in the nether creating a massive nether hub fully equipped with the ability to farm gas magma cubes for frog lights and magma cream decimating the hoglin herds while collecting as many gold nuggies as I can get. Funneling the nuggies to our new pig friends for so many goodies. The nether hub is now complete. Since the end update released in 2016, I've always wanted to transform the main island. Except instead of just placing something on top, I want to remove the island. Creating a giant world tree linking the different dimensions together. Overworld tree hit 140,000 likes, making it my all time most liked video. Let's try and beat that here with the end tree. So be sure to leave a like on this video. This video has taken over 200 hours and more than a month of my time IRL to create. Partially due to the fact that I'm getting married in two weeks. So I really do appreciate your support on this one. And it helps tell YouTube to suggest my content to more people. To fully transform the end dimension, I need to to kill the dragon 20 times. Each kill will unlock a new end gateway. Now I've already killed the dragon twice. Once for the first time going to the end at the start of this world and a second time in order to get the advancement for respawning the dragon. With 18 dragons left to fight to summon the gateways, I decided to live stream until I beat them all. Aha, see, easy. Dragon two is down. There we go, dragon down. Can't escape me, dragon. Got him. Boop. Only take. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There 
we go, the 20th dragon. Oh, it's all done. Oh, it's done. Oh, it's just a moment of silence here for the 20th fallen dragon. With the dragons defeated, I took on the scariest monster of all, the Shulker Monster. So far, I've cleared out 18 Shulker boxes from the mess. It's getting there slowly. But from here, I want to take five of them and fill them up with Endstone before I blow up the island. Five shulker boxes was a bit of a stretch here, but I've recently loved building with the blocks, so I wanted to make sure I gathered up a bunch to be able to use it later on. But I might as well throw these shulker boxes back into the monster and add more right back into it. I want to bring nine shulker boxes with me here to save all the obsidian we have to mine after I repair up my pickaxes again. And much better. Now for the fun to begin, tearing down the obsidian pillars. Let's start out with the tiny one. Beacon buff is gone, but we're down to the final layers underneath the island. This is definitely taking a lot longer than I wanted to being below the beacon. We're going to have to move that down. Well, it's a good thing I dug out this giant pit because I think that'll be perfect. Let's move this down there. And all ready to go. Back to the void. Excuse me, I need this pillar, good sir. Goodbye. I'm sorry. Down to the final layer now, but unfortunately the beacon buff doesn't reach. It reaches to here. The first pillar is now done. Don't fall into the void. And nearly a full shulker of obsidian. For this, the second pillar is now done. And still scary. But we've got progress. Next up, because this hurts my brain so much, the big pillar is off being centered by one block. It's also going to be the most painful to destroy. So let's get to work on this. I continued on mining obsidian, watching Star Wars, and just vibing out in the end dimension until my pickaxe was near the breaking point. Going back to the overworld every time to repair my pickaxe, outside of dropping off all the obsidian, takes way too much time. I think it's finally time for an actual experience farm in this world. The staple of any Minecraft world, an Ender Ender. It's a little scary being on the one block here, so let's get a little bit of a bigger platform. First, I started by placing some frog lights down as a base platform. Then adding a deep slate trim around the edge, I started stacking up carpet to prevent the Enderman from teleporting. Then time to set up the killing area with some hoppers and finishing off the base platform. Then adding in the drop shoot rings and spawning platform at the top. From here, I need a load of ender pearls so that I can spawn an ender mite. So come on over, my friends. Hello, everybody. I need, your, I need ender pearls, please. That should hopefully do it. From here, we need to trap an Endermite sitting in a minecart on top of this. Right, let's give this a shot. Oh, there we go. Yes. Now you just need to go all the way over here. And he's in. You can hang out there forever, buddy. One final step. I want to get rid of this cobblestone and get rid of the leaves. With everything being double carpet down here, we should be safe to smack. And repair up the pickaxe. Oh, this is good. And there we go. Fully repaired. And I only have eight rockets, so I should get more before I get stranded. Back to tearing down the pillars. Finishing off day one of this project by removing the largest pillar of obsidian. Three pillars down. Seven more to go. But at least now the largest is done. With that, I continue to remove the pillars around the circle in hopes of reaching the halfway point on the obsidian mining. And now the fourth pillar is done. One more and we can start the TNT. I think I can make that happen by the end of day today. Halfway through the fifth and we have five more shulkers of obsidian. I just need to fill these up two more times. But at least I can drop them off for now. And back to the end we go. Finally, the fifth pillar is now done as well. Just three hours later. Next, we can use some of the obsidian to cover the exit portal. Well, minus one spot. As next up, I want to assemble Raiseworks TNT Perimeter Maker, where I need a little bit of slime. And finally, a few dead coral fans. Right, this should be everything right here with needing to craft these up into some slime blocks. But I don't have a crafting table. All this end dimension, but no end to my pain. Slime blocks are now crafted, but the trip back made me realize. I need to also break the bedrock 
at the top of the obsidian pillars at least the lower ones for now this was a flashback i really wasn't hoping to have today all right first one and done we're all done with the destroyed pillars since the tnt machine is going to take hours to cover the entire island i'm going to build it now before i break the rest of it assembling the tnt machine itself was terrifying working over the void with buggy explosives but it's now done removing this redstone block should activate it yep yep it did look at all that tnt looks like it is working here so i'm gonna go touch some grass for a few hours and just let it run i'm having one of those moments though where i think i just made a terrible terrible mistake that tnt is gonna hit these and just bounce right back up <laughs> I'm in danger. Oh, well, let's let it ride. And it broke. The machine is now rebuilt five blocks higher. So hopefully this works. With that working and grass touching completed, I went back into my deep obsidian pit of despair and continued destroying the pillars, hoping to move quick enough to stay ahead of the machine itself. Two more pillars destroyed. The machine kept working the entire time, blowing up the end island while I took a much needed break. Looks like the machine missed a little island over here. So I want to blow it up myself for fun. So fun, new explosives, yay! And it didn't get it all. You saw nothing? With the machine stopped, I would like to repair my pickaxes one more time before we get to the final three pillars. Next, I do need to get rid of my safety tub. And pillar number seven is a go. Finally, number eight is now gone as well with this final obsidian. And we go. Two more. One very dead pickaxe. But number nine is now done. I never started the... TNT machine. Let's empty the obsidian shulker boxes and repair the pickaxe. Obsidian is dropped back off in the overworld and it's time to finish this off once and for all. Portal is sealed up so no TNT can escape. And it's time to chop this boy down. With the 10th pillar going down, I completed the final two and a half hours of obsidian mining. It's all done. Just 45,663 obsidian mined in total. That Wow, that's a lot of obsidian. Now I just need to remove the remaining half of the main and island. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I should save the beacon. I don't have an extra. That is terrifying sounding down here. I want out right now. I try not to AFK in this world as I don't want to inflate the day count but there was no work to be done on this project until the island disappeared, so I spent over seven hours AFK waiting for the machine to blow up the island, and it's now complete. Nearly all of the end stone is now gone. I just need to break the last few blocks over the void, which is easier said than done. Try to land on them. Okay. Woo. Oh, I'm gonna hate this. We get it without landing? No, no, we cannot. No, we cannot. Just the two spots the machine could not get to. But now every Enderman and their mom are gonna be hanging out. Maybe we get rid of them. Oh, I made them mad. There we go. Oh, now they're really mad. Oh no. Another one. There we go. You may be tall, but high up the high ground. Oh, Enderkin, we meet again. Huh? He got up here. He also has the high ground. Oh, no. The central bit is now gone. And I'm going to leave a little three by three of frog lights here. Just in case I want to build down, I've got a lot easier access. Now for the last bit under the entry obsidian. We've been through this before. Next, to make sure it's safe when we enter the end for now, this should hopefully stop mobs from spawning on the entry obsidian. Because I need it. Oh, God. This is actually really scary to fly around in, just in an endless void. But it's time to go find some blocks to build with. Now that I've been removing blocks for three weeks, I want to build some things. Let's start with some frog lights for the framework of some pathways. And we are loaded. The goal is to build a giant tree floating in the void surrounding the exit portal. Using the frog lights, I want to make the bottom of the roots glow, making this place more magical. 
First frog branch is in, and I totally think this can work out. Purposely connecting it a little bit lower here, so that's not at the absolute base of the tree. But I think it's time to tackle the root of the problem here and get placed in all these frog lights. It feels great putting in the first blocks on the build, finally moving this forwards. After so long, the roots are stretching out far into the circle of the end gateways. Next, I'm guessing I'm gonna need a lot of glass for this build, and that's no sand. Well, I guess it's off to the desert for me. Hello, mining desert, my old friend. I'm back for more sand. Just six shulker boxes this time. Six shulker boxes full of sand. I'm going to add two of them into the super smelter for now. Now this nearly 2000 day hardcore world is gonna come together. As most of the items I need for this build, I have farms for, like bone meal. From the moss farm to the swamp, drop off the bone meal and get some light blue dye, which we can use for light blue glass. Next up, the guardian farm. First for prismarine and prismarine bricks. And I really thought I had a shulker box of dark prismarine in here. That could be a problem, as I don't have a source of black dye yet. We'll see how far this takes us. I know I want to create a foggy glass floor effect here in the center of the tree using our light blue glass. From here, I've got no idea what I want to do at the center. So let's focus on the entry point. First, I traded with the stonemason villagers to unlock their trades to be able to trade for some quartz. Then running into the mines to gather cobbled deep slate. And now for the fun game of waiting for copper to age. For my birthday, we have some nice oxidized copper to gather up except you. You know what? Nearly two stacks. That should be enough. Back in the end now, and I want to create a safe platform for when we spawn in. Starting off with a circle. Frog lights behind it. And another ring of deep slate on the top. I can't build anything on top of the obsidian because anytime you come into the end, it would all break. So instead, I'm going to be building up and creating a dome over the entire platform. Things are looking good now, but I've got to link this up to the center, where I think I want to use Prismarine for some pathways. The pathway now goes all the way from spawn to the exit portal, kind of. I've decided I want to use warped wood in this build, but I'm a little worried that I don't have much. Oh, really none at all. Okay. I'm thinking a double staircase going around there and here with some stripped warp log pillars and some warp slabs and stairs to get us up. First side is now done. Just need to repeat that over here, which is now done as well. And I want to add in these little amethyst patches here at the back with a walkway to like a viewing platform into the void and using some white concrete we can build a rail with some light blue stained glass and crimson trapdoors on top i've already run out of warp wood so it didn't get me that far but i'm thinking some waxed copper around here could be really cool i just need a lot more warp wood if we want to build the tree out of it first i pick acacia and then i pick warped wood why back into the nether i go to destroy an entire warp forest got him run two Ooh, I'm too good. But here we are, the warped forest. But now that we got all of the warped items gathered up over here, we got a ton of them. I really want to get the ink sorted, so we need a squid farm. First off, we're going to need to take some oak logs and craft a ton of oak fence gates, which this might be able to get us started. ASMR sponge it's drawing. Real. And now we squid farm. Now with the hole cleared out, we need to come in here and create giant platforms for squids to spawn. Now with all of the fences in, I just need to fill the entire thing with water. Then if we open all the fence gates, ah, fell through, I didn't want to fall. I should have done that side first. Probably should have done that side first. Opening the last few fence gates here and the farm is done. Now I just need to keep draining the river going all the way back. 
final step here is going to be adding in an entire layer of glass above the rails. The squid farm is done! No! Ah. Now I can take all of this ink, which there's plenty, turn it into black dye, and craft dark prismarine. With a gradient going from dark prismarine to warp planks to warp warp block to moss block, it's time to build the first root of the tree. I've been gathering and prepping for so long that I forgot to hit record, and I just got building, so enjoy the time lapse that I thankfully had left running in order to complete the entire main stretch of route from the entry platform to the exit portal. Starting from a void of nothingness on this build, it feels great to have the first section built out so I can now safely walk around again in the end. Placing the base of the roots here near the frog lights seems to be my best bet to get this done safely. So it's time to place all of the perimeters in. First half is now done. Just over to the second side. The best part about these bridges is that the frog lights underneath actually stop any endermen from spawning which is going to help a lot. But all of the outlines are now complete. I just need to finish putting the roots on the top of the frog lights. One final time, I grabbed all the blocks I could need and set for spending another two hours finishing off the roots. Finally, over 10 hours later, the roots are finished. I'm now on day 1,971. I started this project on 1,000. 764 with a full central end island obsidian pillars and so many dragons to kill finally the base of the tree is complete but we're only just getting started and we can only go up from here get it because we're building a tree up Okay, I'll get to work. But first, we have something extremely important to do. In every hardcore episode, I build a new field to keep growing the farmland around the capital city, slowly consuming everything with farmland until it blots out the grass with wheat. Wheat as far as the eye can see. So you'll subscribe to see it happen if you haven't already, right? I'm already 200 days in this video. Please sub. Okay, thanks. awesome blue sky planted a field life is good time to have my soul crushed as i stare into the black void that is the end wait i don't have one. Oh no 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 i already made that joke i already made that joke when building the last tree can't do it again keeping the same build palette i'm able to jump into the next section really easily I think a good height for the trunk is to be coming all the way up here. However, I want the tree to look like it's made of light. So I want to bring in a bunch more frog lights throughout here. It's almost like scars going up the tree. First one is now done. Second should be done too. There goes the third winding around the back. From here, I want to focus on the front. So I created a flatter section on the tree to be able to build a better doorway to get inside. Using a similar dome to the landing platform, I want to create an arch out of quartz, adding in the typical deep slight trim. On top, however, I want I want to contrast against all the cyan and prismarines. So prismarine brick won't work, but copper, waxed copper will. Adding in some acacia and orange terracotta with some glow lichen around the edge can really make this pop. And for the first time ever, I'm using honeycomb blocks right along here with some crimson trapdoors on top. That is a much more proper front entrance. From here, I want to grab calcite. And to make the inside of the tree look really clean, we can pile up a bunch of this, which is looking pretty good from the inside. And I'll figure out something fun to do with all the frog lights. And now it's very easy to tell where the entrance is. Let's do this on the backside as well with the little balcony. And I want to repeat a similar idea on the back, incorporating some of the ochre frog lights, then another dome on top. Instead of honeycomb, we'll just use some glass like we did in here. Now I have a second location to look into the endless void. Such a great view. Wow. Let's at least make our home in the endless void of life. I mean, the end dimension look good. So I continued stacking up blocks on the tree trunk itself around the different frog scars I created earlier. One more chunk of the tree left to fill in and another massive section of the tree will be done. Not to get sappy over this tree, but seeing the project take shape has been a fan flippantastic experience throughout this episode. One more thing I would like to try. But what I want to try is adding foggy glass around the froggy scar as they will stand out a little bit. 
First one is done. And I like that a lot. Okay, let's do it on the other two. Those three are now in. And it is looking pretty impressive. Definitely didn't miss one. Nope, not at all. Time to put the glass aside and pick up a bunch of blocks and build out the branches of the tree. Oh snap, I did what I said I was gonna do. What a relief. This build is starting to look absolutely nuts as all of the branches are sticking out. And I think I did a lot better job on the ratio this time compared to the first Giga Tree build. Oh wow, somehow I forgot about all these guys. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need a new plan to get rid of them. And quickly, staring contest, staring contest. Ah, I will win this one. Okay, maybe this is going up for a long time. Goodbye. To spawn proof the top of the tree and really make the floating lore tree impressive, I want to use end rods instead of leaves, which I have tested to make sure it works. And I need 34,000 end rods, meaning five shulker boxes of blaze rods. Ah, I got 64. And five shulker boxes of popped Horus fruit. Thankfully, a long time ago here in the nether, I can run around a nether fortress and kill blazes for hours. Like this guy. Give me a skull. Give me a skull. This time for sure. But no, I built a blaze farm. So now I put on a movie and I kill blazes for a long time. <laughs> From here, I grabbed a carved pumpkin from the overworld and dove into the end gateway to get to the outer islands, gathering as many coarse flowers as I could and leaving a bleak landscape behind me. So I've been working on this all morning and I just realized now, um, I didn't get any audio. This is how I feel right now. This carved pumpkin face, that that's how I feel right now. But good news is one shulker box of coarse fruit, two shulker box of coarse fruit, and the third is almost done too. And we got plenty of flowers. And now with the power of game audio, we break everything. The easy part is now over. I have five shulker boxes of popped chorus fruit and five shulker boxes of blaze rods. Now I'm just really hoping this is actually enough materials to craft all of the end rods. Putting the pumpkin back on and crafting end rods for the first time. I got started placing end rods onto the tree using light manica to make it easier to place them as anytime I've worked with end rods or glass panes resorts in massive amounts of pain. I'm already 300 days into this project now with over 54 hours of time in game building the tree. So I think it's okay to make it go a tiny bit faster. Even with light Matica, I've still never regretted a build decision so much in my life. I repaired my elytra when starting this. It's halfway broken because I keep falling through. In order to move around up here, I have to jump between every single one of these blocks. Looks like it is working to keep the Enderman off the trees though. So that was fantastic. Oh, we're going to have a mob proof end. Ah, hitting everything. Lots of progress is being made on the tree and it looks so good, but my elytra is about to break. And much better. Back to placing end rods. Placing in 30,000 of any block takes ages, but doing that with end rods where you can fall in between the cracks between every single block makes it take so much more time to do. But I've stuck with it and I'm becoming an end rod parkour professional in the process. Crafting up some final rounds of end rods right over here and check this out. We are almost through everything. All of these shulkers are empty and we are now reaching the upper branches of the tree. This is it. The final end rod placements are going in for the tree to be complete. I really never thought I would get to this point. 34,000 end rods all to create this absolutely insane mega tree inside of the end. Currently on day 2040, we started from the base end island, destroyed the entire thing, took down all of the obsidian pillars, and we finally have made it to the end with an entire tree floating here in the void with over 34,000 end rods placed up above to create the leaves on the tree. One part of this remains before we can call this entire project completed. The inside of the tree does not look all that great. Time to grab some calcite and cover the frog legs on the inside with light blue glass as well. One day this project will come to an end, but today is not that day.
The last of the calcite is now going in around the entire interior of the trunk, and it is looking very clean in here. I put some moss at the top to kind of block it off, so we don't need to go all the way up there. No, 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 no. We're going to cut corners. Walls are now in place, and I want to grab some copper, a little bit of bee. Of course, I only have three, but there should be plenty at the bee farm. As well, on top of this one, it is finally time to give the dragon egg a home. First, I want to complete the railing around here on the base, and to break up all the white, let's just fill in moss back here and a few of the roots on top could be better but it'll do for now and ignore everything down in the fog you can't see it the fog is so thick but what i could do is trap doors around the edge which actually helped a lot next for the dragon egg itself we've got the copper down and going up a few blocks here i want to create some archways going all the way around and then from here taking a few of our warp trap doors Wow, 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 wow. Okay, it's not safe to fly in here. We can step all the trapdoors up like this to make them float. And then I think in here in the center, we can add some frog lights. And I really like how much this contrasts against everything else in the center. But now we take the end rod and finally, 2000 days later, return the dragon egg to the end. Just a little bit of a different environment now. The sugar box monster has been cleaned up and it is looking so good in here. But there's one more element we still need to do. The last item on the cleaning list, I need to remove the TNT machine and try and save as many as I can. And there we have it, it is completely gone. There it is, the entry. Remember, there will be a world download available to YouTube members and Patreon supporters. So join the Discord after pledging to get the download if you wanna check out this world in game for yourself. I am getting married in about two weeks after this video goes live, and I'm super excited to say that this thing is done. I was getting a little worried there. When I return from my honeymoon, I hope to upload the hardcore series much more regularly. And we're going back to our roots in this hardcore world. Back to the starter house to start construction on a massive medieval fantasy city rolling down the hills please be sure to leave a like on this video as i've literally been working on it for over a month irl let's beat 140,000 likes to surpass the overworld tree and please subscribe but i'll catch y'all on the flip side